Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, presented daily by Go Chevrolet, online at GEAUXChevrolet.com. Stop in, see Lee Carney, Nick Richard, the entire crew over there, as they'll get you set up here on this... Uh, Wednesday. This Wednesday, <laughs> this holiday week. It does feel very much like a holiday week. It does. Right? I thought it was Thursday when I woke up this morning. Yeah. I was like, there's no way. There's no way it's that quick. I feel like I'm still sleeping from the weekend. Oof. It is weird. Um, we have a uh, really good show coming up this morning. We're going to talk to Lionel Rainey, LR3 Consulting. We always like to talk to Lionel. Lionel was one of our first guests here on the Jordy Collada he's Show. A, he's a bammer. Very outspoken. <laughs> he is a tighter. He is a tighter. We'll let you know about uh, it. He is a, he is a gump, <laughs> uh, and he will let you know about it. Um, but that, that is not his, that is not the reason that is not his worst quality. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got some bad, he's got some bad stuff, but he's got some good stuff with him. He's got great information. He's going to stop by here. He's a really good friend of our show. Uh, he's going to stop by here and talk some of the legislation that came through in the, uh, in the session. He'll also talk about, uh, name, image, and likenesses. He's got an interesting point of view coming up here at, uh, at seven 30 this morning. So stick around. Lionel Rainey from LR3 consulting will stop by here. And then at 8.30 this morning, we'll have our first uh, chat with uh, new LSU head baseball coach Jay Johnson, which uh, looks like the Colada Show timed this thing just about right. Uh, <laughs> just weird. about right. Let him go through the car wash with all the other media uh, and, and all of the other shows before he has his pitching coach in line, before he's got Jacob Berry on campus, before he's had an opportunity to really evaluate the roster and everything that's going on. So we like our place here. Uh, this morning at 8.30 as we will catch up with new LSU head baseball coach Jay Johnson as we'll ask him all of it. Uh, Jason Kelly in the news right now per Kendall Rogers, and we have booked Kendall Rogers on this show Friday morning, so looking forward to our conversation with Kendall about how this LSU baseball job unfolded, how it was filled, and then his point of view of where the Tigers sit now with Jay Johnson in the driver's seat and as the head coach. We'll talk to Kendall Rogers of D1 Baseball coming up on Friday morning here, but here on this Wednesday. Uh, Coach Johnson will stop by 8.30. We'll ask him about Jason Kelly, which nothing official yet from LSU, so it'll be interesting to hear Coach Johnson's stance. We'll ask him about it, obviously, uh, because it is in the news and it is trending. I don't know if he'll have an official statement on it just because of what has to happen in the background. Uh, If you remember, uh, the LSU offensive line coach, Brad Davis, who was brought in the weekend of LSU's first on-campus camp, couldn't actually be on the field coaching the campers because of the stuff that was happening behind the scenes, the background checks, the stuff that you have to go through from a paperwork standpoint to get cleared and, and announced that, that you are uh, now hired on by a state university. Uh, we'll see if Coach can have a, uh, a comment about Jason Kelly, but if How nothing else... LSU in that background check? Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just let him on it. What I was going to ask is, if he's around the building and you bump into him, you can talk to him, huh? Sure. Yeah, if you're, like, you're talking I mean, about Brad just, Davis? Yeah. Yeah, no, that was happening a lot during the weekend. I would imagine weekend. so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoops. Oh, hey. uh, wow, what are you doing here, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> what else well, did he do? Why, are, why are you here? <laughs> well, now that you are here, we've got this four-star <laughs> offensive tackle that wants to talk to you. Just go sit at the lunch table. That's right. Um, so <laughs> I've been eating lunch for 12 hours <laughs> we today. Will, uh, <laughs> we, will talk to, uh, we will talk to Coach Jay Johnson coming up here at uh, at 8.30 this morning. Really looking forward to, uh, to that hire as... Uh, Doing a, a little bit of research on Coach Johnson and listen to a couple of the stops that that he has uh, he has made. Uh, Emily Dixon, who is uh, over at LSU, had a great sit down with Jay Johnson. Cody Worsham on his Tigers Win podcast had a uh, extended conversation, and even uh, uh, Willie Wade with gave the, uh, some backdrop on him with the new LSU baseball coach. And yes, Will Wade uh, was able to sprinkle in a couple of diamonds of information. Uh, with uh, with his last interview here on the Jordy Collada show. So looking forward to catching up with Coach Johnson at uh, at 8.30 this morning. Game one of the NBA Finals last night, uh, semifinals in the Euro match, which we would never talk a lot of soccer here. Uh, but, but, uh, you shouldn't bet on it either. Team, <laughs> team Italia was, uh, was winners yesterday in, uh, in, in penalty kicks and in extended time. And Lloyd gave me a piece of information this morning that just blew my mind. I, I had no <laughs> idea. Sour over there. Uh, <laughs> I knew that Lloyd was a degenerate. I knew that he was a gambler and would bet on just about anything that you would offer him. Uh, he has he has fallen victim for placing a little bit of scratch on on a soccer game 
uh, and he bet Team Italy to win yesterday, so you would think that he would be celebrating here on this Wednesday morning. But per, is this soccer rules? Is this gambling rules? Oops. Whatever rules when enacted here, <laughs> Lloyd was not able to collect on his bet and was actually deemed a, a loser. Loss. I'm a loser. <laughs> a loss. Unbelievable. You think, you know, and I should have known better. I got myself in uncharted territory here betting on some, uh, the football. Well, I have no, no help yeah, I had no idea what was going on, but I saw that the odds were you know, plus 125 or whatever for Italy. And I was like, well, I'd imagine they're both pretty good at soccer. I'll take, I'll take a little, you know, yeah, right. maybe I can get a little Make hit on this thing. Yes. And I'll watch the last five minutes or whatever soccer is. And uh, turns out, if you don't finish that thing in regulation, that bet's a loss no matter what's what? happened. So it was, I don't even know what the score was, tied one to one. Yeah, one to one. One to one. They go into extra time. I have no idea if I would have won if they'd have won it in extra time. Turns out when you get to PKs, everybody's a loser. How did you so, find out you lost? Like, you saw they won, and you're like, yeah. Bring well, I checked, I checked my account whenever they went to, uh, like, PKs. I was like, I guarantee you, I guarantee you they gave me a loss if this goes to PKs. That's exactly what happened. I watched wow, it Wow, anyway. you could feel it. I could feel it. just felt, it felt yeah. oogie. It, was it felt good. like a soccer <laughs> bet. Like, I bet you have to finish this thing in 90 minutes or whatever, so... That's what happened to me. It's Jeez. awful. So that don't is... bet soccer. You should ask Peter Kellogg before you I, bet. Uh, shit, I need his number. Resident soccer guy. Run the bet back. I'll do, yeah, I'll double down. <laughs> that is uh, that is brutal. All time bad beat. That is that that could be an all timer. Yeah, that's I mean, a bummer, Lloyd. That is uh, that's like Pete Rose telling that story when he had the horse that night at the uh, the Cincinnati track and his horse was like eight 20, furlongs 20, ahead. Yeah, like eight ten furlongs ahead, and a deer ran out of what? the woods. Next Stop. to the track no and spooked the horse and threw the jockey off of the no. horse and turned around and ran the other way. <laughs> yes. I had my house like, on that. Like a 10 links lead. <laughs> I mean, he's Just, like, mother <laughs> boy, boy. Oh, my God. I mean, like, and especially if you're Pete Rose, you're spending all day at the yes. track. Like, you're going to see something weird happen. He's like, I mean, I was having a bad day. I finally got myself a winner here. <laughs> <laughs> takes off the other way. He's like, all right, I'm oh out of here. God. A deer. It like crazy. just jumped onto the track, hopped onto the track, <laughs> spooked the horse. That's why he went horse to chunks rest. the jockey. And he was there. He was there. Did it show his Witnessed face? It. Like, I don't know if oh, I don't know if there's awesome. any oh, visuals no, on is, it. This is no Kentucky Derby. He is at some seat right. track in Cincinnati. This is like the Cincinnati like the Cincinnati track. Derby. Yeah. It's like one of thirteen people. Yeah. It's ten a.m. on a Wednesday and he's just sitting there just with the crinkled paper in his hand going through the <laughs> Smoking cigarettes. Yes. Uh, Signing baseballs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, this will pay for that loss. Here, come over here, kid. What's on that hat? <laughs> daily, we, daily, we were brought to you by Majestic Coffee. Remember, Majestic Coffee is uh, locally brewed down here in Louisiana. You can find them online at deliciousips.com. Our water is provided daily by Soccer. True Blue Water. Soccer, bro. <laughs> T-R-U, bluewater.com. Truebluewater.com is where you can find them online. They help us out every day. And then both of our uh, both of our uh, guests today will be via the phone line. Or I take that back. Lionel will be inside of the UDL uh, here at 730 this morning. Uh, but Coach Johnson will be on the phone line, and that will be compliments, uh, compliments of Metropolitan Health Group. Real Doctors, Real Solutions. That's Charlie Harvey and Jason Ramazan. Uh, get in touch with our crew over at Metropolitan Health Group. They're online. And Mr. Funds Travel have been getting a lot of phone calls about the availability in any open spots for that trip to Pasadena for LSU-UCLA on the first opening weekend of college football, the opening weekend days. of college football, two months away. I'm still on the fence. Still on the fence? I'm, the you fence better, I'm telling you, you better make, it, you better make up your mind because the seats are, uh, seats are going. What's and this is a once-in-a-lifetime oh, oh, experience. I don't know really, is. really why, uh, why, why, somebody, why why somebody like you with the yeah. financial means I could house hey, it. That, no. could, that could take this uh, that could take this go. trip. Uh, would not do this. You have kids that are that are in formidable ages that will remember this for the rest of their That's life. That's true. You have a husband who's a sports fanatic. True. Uh, you were on a sports show, so you could be deemed Checking a sports all fanatic. The boxes. <laughs> I mean, you, you could, could actually kind of write it right off here. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, the five-hour plane ride oh, of stop. only LSU people, which could get annoying. That chant. Yeah. For five hours. Which one? Might uh, the, the ride there bit. would probably be worse, just because they yeah. are they're they're so fired up, and you know they're going to be boozing at seven o'clock in yeah. the morning. Yeah. Airport. Uh, oh, they got to check and make sure that the 
the, the, these planes are the ones that sell booze because some of them do not. So. I know. Well, this it's is a, a charter flight. Charter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, we're chartered, good we're chartered good with we're nothing good but LSU Mr. fans. Fun. Yeah, 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 Mr. Fun. Yeah. Go ahead and not put on the liquor and see what happens, yeah, Jason. Yeah, I'm flying this plane. Exactly. Turn this damn thing around. Um, I know it would be a blast. I just, I, I have to get my mind right around that. You know? Yeah, yeah. I got you in, though. I got you and your crew in. I think that's an easy call there. Uh, and not now that we've got the uh, the minions on the recruiting trail for you. I, I know that Noah Lo, uh, Lloyd and uh, and Jack will be pushing you towards uh, Pasadena oh for them no, no. for them to have a uh, we, an opening we weekend good party. Lifestyle for her. Don't, don't put that on. I just wanted to make sure she makes memories with her family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, Live laugh fun. <laughs> so we will uh, we will talk to Coach Johnson, a, a uh, an all star for the Tigers, one that we have not talked about here uh, a lot. Uh, Kevin Galsman is having a incredible 2021 season. In fact, uh, so much so that he was named to the All Star team. Uh, that'll be that, that game will be held on uh, on July 13th over at Coors Field in Denver. Uh, Galsman, uh, who uh, pitched at LSU for two seasons, is in his ninth. MLB season in his second with the Giants. He's eight and two this season as a starting pitcher for San Francisco with just under a 1.7 ERA. He's at 1.68 uh, with uh, over 100 innings on the season. Uh, and uh, in the in the nine game uh, nine year career, he's been all over the place. He's been in Baltimore, been in Atlanta, been in Cincinnati, and now it seems to have found a a comfort zone uh, in San Francisco and in pitching. Baseball. At an all-star level, yes, they are. Uh, they're shining right now, and their best pitcher is Kevin Galsman, and he will be representing them uh, in next week's all-star game over in Denver. So, What's shout out. Where, uh, that's in Denver. There? Beautiful. Uh, but what yeah. team? Colorado was? Rockies. Woof. Okay. I've been um, there for on a vacation, and my God, you can get lost in that stadium if you know what I'm saying. Right, really? <laughs> yeah, well, I was just on a different planet. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just walking there? around watching baseball. I was like, I don't even know no, where no, our no, seats no, no. are. It's at a different location every year. Oh, every year they change it? Yeah. Oh, What's okay. your favorite all-star location? Favorite All Star location that I've, uh, I guess that I've experienced. I, I the one that moment. the one that always sticks out to me is Ken Griffey Jr. in Baltimore at Camden Yards. Mine was Josh Hamilton Yankees. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was That was that was great. That, that was, was great. So cool. Have y'all ever been to an All Star game? I've never no. been to an All Star game. No. Um, no. Was uh, Bregman was the MVP? Was he at Fenway? No, was it Fenway. in? I thought it was in Houston. When no, no, it wasn't. No, it was in Houston. I don't think okay. I've Fenway since Ted Williams came out. Was it okay? All right, but but Bregman was, um, uh, but when Bregman was the All Star Game MVP, obviously he hit the home run to win it. Um, and I, I remember, yes, and I remember it was. I thought it was at a, at, at a historic park. Uh, he was there 2018, 2019. Surprised that Aaron Knoll is not there uh, this year for uh, for LSU. Galsman being the only uh, the only. Uh, all-star for uh, for LSU. So we're going to talk to, uh, uh, obviously, Jay Johnson about LSU baseball coming up here. Uh, name, image, and likeness still all over the place. Uh, and uh, we will talk to uh, Lionel Rainey coming up here in a couple of minutes. But you're starting to see some of these deals. Uh, I saw that a uh, Oregon-wide receiver uh, signed a six-figure deal uh, with Nike uh, over, uh, over the last 24 hours. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau has a six-figure NIL deal with Nike that uh, will end after the 2021 season. Uh, he is in partnership with Nike founder Phil Knight, designer Tinker Hatfield, uh, and Thibodeau has unveiled uh, his, uh, his first NFT yesterday. He did that uh, on, his, uh, on his social media. So you're starting to see uh, not necessarily the big markets like we talked about, but the big market capability teams. The University of Miami yesterday, if you're paying attention to this, uh, the U, uh, all 90 players on the roster got an NIL, uh, an NIL deal uh, from one of the nation's top training academies for MMA fighters, which has uh, 44 licensed gym, uh, gyms throughout South Florida uh, and, and throughout the country and has finalized plans to offer name, image, and likeness contracts to every University of Miami scholarship football player. Each of the 90 existing Miami scholarship players will be offered $500 a month, so a contract up to $6,000 per year to endorse uh, America top team through their social media accounts, personal appearances, and marketing vehicles. If all 90 players opt to accept the deal, the total American top team investment in, in year one could reach $540,000. The deal 
is administered by a new marketing company called Bring Back the U, which was created by South Florida businessman Dan Lambert, who founded America Top Team and is uh, a longtime uh, Golden Cane member uh, at, uh, uh, as a booster uh, for the University of Miami. So, I, look, you will start seeing this. Uh, I, I imagine that Southern California and UCLA, big market teams like that, will see the movie industry or somebody within that industry um, that has UCLA, USC, uh, a state university tie there come in and, and try to um, really endorse the entire team. Texas oil money. Texas oil money. <laughs> Texas A&M boosters. Um, I mean, think about the big money schools, the big market Arkansas. capabilities. Arkansas, sure. Um, you know, I mean, all of the SEC schools has um, a couple of dynamic boosters that can change the game overnight. I mean, yeah. Auburn. You know, I mean, Auburn's the CEO of Apple is an Auburn grad. Tim Cook. I mean, uh, absolutely. Yellowwood uh, fencing, Yellowwood in, in Alabama. I mean, their CEO is an is a, a, a Auburn grad. I didn't realize that. Um, Goes you know, to show all the different ways you can make money and make a ton of it. Like it you have, well, you have Oregon with Nike and Phil Knight. Like, well, that makes sense. You're like fencing in Alabama is actually a billion dollar <laughs> right. industry. It's like, oh god, and he's lurking in the shadows. Like you wouldn't know him if you saw him I on the know. street. I he's cutting know. mega checks for Auburn. I mean, Alabama's got two or three boosters that Saban can pick up the phone at any time. The guy who sponsors the Reese's Senior Bowl. Uh, find out who that is. The guy who is is the number one Alabama booster. Um, that exist, and I mean, hmm. Saban has got carte blanche to his 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 private jet. I mean, anytime, look forward to that phone call. Anytime Saban needs to to get anywhere around the country, that's why Saban looks at Ed Ogeron and smirks and laughs when Ogeron's sitting out in the public at, at a public pool in New Orleans with <laughs> with his girlfriend of the week, and he's got access to private air and private condos and boosters houses that, that are out of the country uh, that you can go hide out on and and he's going to put that stuff in people's face like you don't think that Nick Saban and Kirby Smart and Jimbo Fisher aren't just cutting the legs out of that and recruiting to the moms mm -hmm. I mean they are mm -hmm. having a field day on that stuff um, shocked you didn't see him at the country club I was. I had my eyes peeled. <laughs> I mean, I had my eyes peeled. I thought for sure he'd be he'd be at, at some public pool over the weekend. Oiled up. Yeah, just oiled up, Lathered. greased up, making sure you saw the traps. You could even take a divot out of that skin if you hit yeah. it with a golf club. No, it's so, just, just so stretched and perfect. Bait, bait, just bait. No, I wouldn't say perfect. Cracklins. Uh, we will be at A Bears today. <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> crackling for days. We're going to be at A-Bears today. In fact, we're going to start running a lot of shop at A-Bears. If you need to find the Colada <laughs> show, you can find us in a window from about 11 to 2 daily. Uh, where We'll be talking a lot of shop. We'll be doing a lot of things over there. But we're going to be eating the lunch. And yesterday uh, was the first day of the lunch menu over at A-Bears Specialty Meats on Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge. And by all accounts, it was a huge success. Uh, if you were looking for a place to stop in and grab a po' boy, Grab a hot dog. Did you get a um, oh, no, you can't, can't with the bread. No, I can't. We have to cut it up. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That's what I need to saw there for lunch. Like, can you bomb a bird my food yes. to me? That's amazing. <laughs> um, but if you were looking for a, uh, a place to stop in and grab lunch, if you're around the, the Jefferson Highway area, if you're around uh, Mid-City Baton Rouge and you want to stop in and see them there in the Boca Shopping Center next to Pearson's Luggage, there's also a location out in Prairieville. They've been serving lunch. Uh, that they, they uh, stop in today and see them. Uh, a Bear's Specialty Meats, uh, they're all over social media. They got great lunch specials. And while you're in there waiting on your lunch, you can shop the, uh, the freezers and uh, take something home tonight and cook for the family or get something uh, on the grill and get it ready for the weekend uh, as they've got great chicken. selections. Uh, home of the D-Bone Chicken uh, over at uh, A Bear's Specialty Meats. We'll be there today uh, at around 11 o'clock uh, eating some lunch over there. So stop in and say hello. And like I said, if you see me around town, Ask me for a gift card. Don't be shy. Odds are I got a pocket full of them, and uh, we want to get you in there, let you experience A-Bears, whether it be for lunch or whether it be taking something home uh, for dinner and the crew uh, for you to uh, come back and check it out. So uh, A-Bears Specialty Meets, a fine sponsor here of the Jordy Collada Show with locations in Prairieville and in Baton Rouge. Uh, so we will talk to uh, Lionel Rainey coming up here 
uh, in a couple of minutes as Lionel will be here uh, talking about uh, name, image, and likeness. Uh, we will also get his thoughts on a couple of bills that came through uh, the legislative session to see how uh, they affect what's going on in the business in our state. Um, th- I've got a question for you. Yep. Which do you think is more of an advantage in terms of name, image, and likeness for Oregon to be able to shell out you know, a six-figure deal to one player or the way Miami's doing it and shelling out 5000 to everybody? Um, I think that Nike's probably going to have the most curbside appeal because, or excuse me, Oregon will have the most curbside and appeal. One of the same. Right, because, <laughs> because of Nike behind them and how much people will pay attention to that, just how much yes. uh, name recognition that has in recruiting to get somebody uh, to start paying attention to you on the trail. But um, I think that there will be success stories um, all over the place. I think that this Miami, this Miami uh, format and model that they are rolling out down there is going to be replicated Mm. Um, because I think that when you see the opportunity to get everybody paid and what that's going to do for your locker room, like this is a booster who sees a great opportunity to give his, his school an advantage, but also help promote his businesses. I mean, he's kind of, it's a win-win for him. It's definitely a win-win for him. Um, And then all the while, I mean, he probably feels like he has, some type of input on the chemistry of the team, like on the way that this team is dangerous. It, though. it does get dangerous. It absolutely That's gets dangerous. Um, but in this in this model, where you you're, you're paying everybody and you give everybody an equal opportunity, I mean somebody is going to pursue this this contract and be successful from it. I think it's Oregon. You can recruit anybody from Oregon to Maine. If I got Arch Manning, I know. No, I agree. I mean, I, I think that just because of the check mark, yeah. and because of the cachet and what it brings, uh, and the conversations it allows you to have, brings in those five stars. Um, yes, I mean it will have an enormous impact. And on, that's on, that. On, yeah, on that's. Recruiting. I think that's what the bigger the bigger question is is with recruiting because Oregon's obviously going after the banner names with five stars of doing this. If you come here, we could give you a hundred thousand dollars. Well, Miami's like sprinkling seeds everywhere, yeah. and we'll get you know it's it's good for the community, it's good for everybody else. But if you're that big cat, you, you might you might look more toward somebody that's going to feature you just with yeah. that one big check. Like it's not like they're they're going to run out of money, right? But it just seems like there's a different like there's a different a differentiation already for between sure, how yeah. different teams are going to run through I nil. Realize it's like I can't compete with every single five star right now, so you have to go a little grassroots effect and find a diamond in the rough. Yeah, I mean, and look, this is this is Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, you know, he is he is in the discussion with Derek Stingley Jr. to be the number one pick in the draft. So, I mean, I expect Stingley to make six six figures this year from name, image, likeness. I mean, I really do. It's I, just not this public. Uh, yeah, it's just not. It's not Nike. It's yeah. not Nike money. And Tinker you know? and Phil. Right. I mean, you're not you're not aligned with 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 business uh, partners like Phil. Uh, Phil Knight and Tinker Hatfield, names that are that that you know, um, that are household names. Um, but I mean, look, Derek Stingley Jr.'s got Walk On's money. Yeah. He's got Raising Cane's money. Uh, I mean, he's got he's got potentially automotive sponsorships in his back pocket that are that are going to line him pretty good. Um, so I mean, I, I expect when this is all said and done, for for Stingley to be swimming in six figure deals as well. So. Um, it just makes me nervous still how fast sure. this is going. Golly, Every you, day is new. How do you think it makes a, a, an administration I feel? can't imagine. They don't know. I can't they're, imagine. They're building they a plane in the air. I need yes. to think about it. Adding I more paperwork to the dust of yes. LSU. And the paperwork that you were doing three weeks ago means nothing. Oh, I know. That's means a thing. nothing. So you don't need um, that report? No. No, shred it. No, move on to the next one. <laughs> uh, John Son Spillers is our dentist here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, start to turn the corner. Starting to turn the corner on What's the, the next uh, move. On the extra, the the, uh, the next move is uh, is tooth. implant. You know what I mean? We're 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 in a training process right now for the gum, bro. Getting the uh, getting the the bone strong enough to deal with the new tooth. So that's not um, the the same tooth. That's not your real tooth. This is not, in. Um, this is still the, the tooth that was there. This is the tooth they pulled and they put it back oh, in, God. but the bone graft is inside your gum yeah. up put here. That back in. Yes. Yeah. Dude, that that huge tooth you sent us a picture of yes. went back. That's why he was struggling. I mean, 
It was, man. uh, yeah, Pretty I mean, Spillers, Spillers went, uh, I mean, he went into the lab, bro. I mean, he was. <laughs> Custom would have won. It, was it already was. The sounds, the noises. <laughs> I just uh, above him. <laughs> uh, but my man crushed it, bro. He was yeah. great. His crew is great. Uh, they've got two locations. <laughs> Dr. Johnson, Dr. Spillers, Baton Rouge, and in Gonzales. I was over at Prepare Avenue in Gonzales. Uh, I've been to the Baton Rouge location, very, uh, both very convenient on Baton Rouge, in Baton Rouge, on Perkins Road, in between Segan and Blue Bonnet. Uh, check them out over there, Johnson and Spillers, uh, johnsonspillers.com, uh, and you can find them on social media as well. Uh, Dr. Chad Spillers has uh, taken care of us since day one, man. We have uh, always been grateful to him and his partnership and his, his support. Uh, and now taking care of us and uh, making it uh, as delightful as it can be. Jeez. As delightful as it can be. So there's bone above your tooth? Yes. Yes. Is that your jaw? We don't uh, yes, know. I guess. I, I guess. Know, Chad, I guess. what is it? Is it your know. jaw? <laughs> your um, teeth bone? Mouth that's bone? how stupid I am. I figured your jaw was just like this. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I, I picture like, now I'm picturing like a shark's mouth. You know, when you have these people that have it over their desk and it's the whole thing and then the ring yeah. of teeth. So I guess that is all of bone. your jaw. Yeah, it's bone. Yeah. Oh. All brutal, I'm, I'm just picturing brutal. that it's too. Brutal. So I'm proud of you. At, you, you know. should just cut your losses. War it right here. Yeah, yeah you should just be, yeah been the guy. I can't. The- I got it in my head. <laughs> um, Lionel Rainey of LR3 <laughs> Consulting will stop in next. He'll uh, make his return here on the Jordy Colada Show. Always lots to get to. Good information. Jay Johnson, new head baseball coach with the Tigers, one hour from now. So stick around here on the Jordy Colada Show. Presented and driven daily by Go Chevrolet. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abair over at Abair's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Abair's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby.
Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show. My goodness, man. <laughs> Renaissance man. I mean, this guy. Uh, the law. <laughs> Lionel Rainey, a great friend, even though he is a gump. He is a proud Bama gumper and a, uh, a loud one. I don't know if I've ever met a quiet one, though. No. Um, as the, tame, uh, the what's that? Super tame fan base. Well, you know. yeah, we, <laughs> we kind of write the model, don't we? Yeah, I got a lot of yeah. skills. Yeah, I look, guess we do, right? You're look right. Look at this nice glass house we <laughs> live right. in. <laughs> um, LR3 Consulting, he is the president over there. Uh, we have talked to uh, John Stefanski. We've talked to many politicians that have come through here that have used uh, Lionel Rainey and his uh, his services as far as uh, being able to uh, with with PR and uh, strategy uh, and all that goes in uh, to political campaigns. He's also paying a lot of attention to this name, image, and likeness stuff that is happening without college thro- uh, throughout college sports, uh, and uh, seems to be uh, the buzz. I mean, every time I open up the papers, I see another story. I saw where Arch Manning and Darren Ravel was saying that uh, Arch Manning could. Uh, he, he could demand as much as, uh, as, as $10 million on a name, image, and likeness deal. I know that that is very bold, uh, but two years, bold. two years from now, this thing could be uh, very much figured out, uh, right. at least much more figured out than it is today. W- w- what do you see the issues of name, <clears throat> image, and likeness causing, whether good or bad, for college sports? So what's wild is, and, and you know, whether or not you, you – Yeah, good to see you too. Good morning. <clears throat> yes. uh, whether or not you like it or not, you know, you've got – you basically have two people who've always been super attracted to each other right. and have always wanted to hook up, but there's been a barrier between these two, between these advertisers and athletes. They've never let them, never let them dance, and now that barrier has been moved out of the way, and they are going to explode. They are right. exploding into each other. They can't get to each other quickly enough. Um, and th- nobody knows – Right now, it's the Wild West. There it really is. aren't any. Um, I mean, only half the, the country's doing it. Half the states are doing it. Uh, you're going to see I, I, I'm expecting the rest of the states to catch up uh, pretty quickly. So the market's trying to figure out, you know, what what's the value proposition um, bet- between both of these. And I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there that, you know, that there are these seven-figure contracts that are about to get dropped. And, you know, outside of maybe – you know, you're the most elite athletes, you know, the kids that are going to be uh, that are playing for national championships and getting a lot of screen time uh, and are major, major stars. The dollar figure is probably going to be a little bit lower than what they expect. Um, but there's a ton of money out there to be made. I mean, we represent we've represented professional athletes. We represent corporate interests. Um, and a lot of these corporate clients are, are, are trying to figure out how how do we do this? How do we get in there? How do we sign them? Um, and and who's our best fit? And that's what I, you know, a lot of these kids need to understand. A lot of say kids, a lot of these student athletes, um, somebody needs to be looking out for their best interests. Yeah. Somebody needs to be looking out what's best for them. And I say that for in a couple of ways. One, this is taxable income. Uh-huh. So they're going to have to pay federal taxes. They're going to have to pay state taxes, and they're going to have to pay self-employment taxes. Um, because, uh, uh, and most of these kids, I'm going to bet, have never, uh, ha- haven't been filing tax returns, especially not tax returns like this. Um, so, you know, what's the best route for them to go? Is it to create an LLC, possibly, you know, to be able to, uh, to save some money in, in regards to taxes? They also need somebody advising them, especially if this is the first time they're, they're coming into money and into cash, right? Don't spend it all. Like, hold on to some of that money because what you don't want at the end of the year is a slew of your athletes because the Uncle Sam's coming for his. Believe that. Like, they're, mm. the government's going to get it. And their we'll money. get it. Yes, sir, they'll get it. And right. so what you don't want is a problem of having a lot of student athletes now with tax liens and tax bills, you know, where people are coming after them. So they need people looking out for them in that regard. But also, I mean, a lot of these – I'm going to bet – None of these kids have ever signed a, or have ever negotiated a contract, right? So we've negotiated contracts for professional athletes before. I mean, we have to bring in lawyers to be able to take a look at it and understand the nuances of it and be able to negotiate uh, the contract on what's best for that athlete. Um, they need somebody looking at these contracts that they're going to sign, and they also need to understand that it might the first deal that comes to them might not be the best deal. Sure. Right. There may be a better deal out there, and I know that that's you know you're you're you've been wanting to do this for so long, and the rush is is there. But just take a step back, wait a second, and there may be a much better deal out there 
for you. And they also have to understand and, and start to watch, you know, how they interact with the general public, especially with their social media and, and mm-hmm. the standards in which they have. Because now they're not only representing themselves in the university, now they're getting paid by a corporation or a company to represent that company. And so they are, in essence, a spokesperson for that company. And those companies are going to have standards. And these kids, these student athletes, need to understand what makes them marketable. And it's not only what they do on the field, but it's what they do off the field, right? And, and things that they say and the way that they um, conduct themselves. And so, they, you know, these, they really need someone out there. And, and it's going to be, I'm guessing, a wide-open market you and I were talking before we came on about, you know, a, a business model mm-hmm. to take care of these uh, student athletes and to be able to help them out is wide open. It's out there um, uh, for these kids. And, and they are, they're going to need, they're going to need somebody watching their back uh, and they're going to need somebody looking out for them. They're, and, and, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, which student athletes could be best for some of the clients that we have that want them to, uh, that want them to represent them. And then these, corporations are trying to figure out what's the dollar figure you know how much you know what's the what's the value proposition in the market it's kind of that's going to work yeah. itself out right um it, it'll get it'll get figured out but right now man it's sort of the wild west it very much feels like that how do you see the relationship of the student athletes and the university coexisting in this world i think lsu is trying to to make that happen. Other universities are running from that. Some are flirting with that. What, what they do better you fig- see? They better figure it out. They better figure it out quick. I think what a lot of them are hoping, I know what a lot of these universities are hoping is that the NCAA, when they came out and sit in at, you know, right before the, the Supreme Court ruling, and, and they came out, they were hoping that the NCAA was going to say, look, here are the stringent guidelines. Uh-huh. You can do it. It's, it's A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, X, Y, Z. NCAA didn't do that. They're like, yeah, go get it. Yeah, and so and leaving it in essence up to the universities. I mean, let's take LSU. LSU is a Nike school. You're gonna have a a Nike school with somebody rocking Adidas and representing Adidas. I mean, it's you're you're in you know. Are, can you wear an LSU jersey? I think we both know how protective uh, LSU is with their uh, their property rights and their logo and their colors. I mean, you can't even hit that specific color scheme. Uh, in an ad without getting a letter from a lawyer two days later, I know, <laughs> we, we experience it. Um, without getting a letter from a lawyer saying, you know, you can't use our, our, our likeness um, or you can't use our copyrighted name and, and image. And so the, the universities are going to have to find a way to work with these student athletes uh, for them to be able to um, – to be able to coexist because they, they, they are now both alive yeah. in this, this ethos and this weird place. And now it's this, this, this is strange dance they're doing and, and nobody really knows what, what's going to happen. Don't you see this more um, advantage for like the Bryce Youngs of the world, the Derek Stingleys of the world, the Kayvon Thibodeaux of the world, those guys are going to get their money. Yes. Like they, they're, they're, I mean, Stingley's going to make six figures. Thibodeau's going to make six figures. Rattler at, at Oklahoma is going to make six. I mean, your guy, Bryce, right. he's going to make six figures. Um, isn't this more advantage like offensive lineman, defense, the guy you don't necessarily know, but you look up and he's got 30,000 <clears> followers on social media. He's got a big person. To me, this was T-Bob Bear's dream. Right. Uh, you didn't know T-Bob as much as – the football player, but then you did a little research and you said, man, he's got a likable personality. He's got a lot of followers yeah. on social media. If I just give him a, a script to read, he'll probably put some personality behind it and make it funny or interesting. Let me pay this guy to, to, to promote my business. Right. And I mean, and first thing you need to understand is not everybody's getting paid. Uh huh. Right. This is not, this is, you know, this is a welcome to the real world. Like, I'll uh, feed you if you promote us type thing. You're not right. going to get you give not you money. Not everybody's yeah. getting paid, yeah. and not everybody is getting paid the same. Uh, so there's going to be, and we'll see how that. It's free market. It, it's exactly what it is, and we'll see how that transpires in the locker room. Uh-huh. And, yeah. you know, and we'll, and we'll yeah. see where a lot of the focus is on mm-hmm. these players. Are they focused on, uh, are they still focused on the game, or are they focused on making money? Um, and, you know, from being able to speak from the side of an advertiser, not only are you looking for the, the, the athlete that is recognizable, right, who you, uh-huh. who you see in the highlight reels and, and who, you're, who you're seeing online every day, 
um, and who's playing for a championship year in and year out. But you're right. I mean, there is a fit for these guys. You know, there's a, and there's a fit for – and this, I think this is a big deal for a lot of female athletes uh-huh. too, um, who for a lot of these star male athletes, there is a life after – college sports is called the NBA and it's called the NFL and Major League Baseball and the PGA. It's not so much that that opportunity is not there for as uh, as many of these female athletes. And so for them, even for like, take somebody that's across country, you think that there's not a shoe company out there uh, who wants to promote them? Of course there is. Um, uh, Or an endurance bar. I mean, like it's it's, uh, insane for golf and, and same for all these sports that may have gone overlooked. So there's enormous opportunity out there. Uh, you know, these, these athletes just have to be able to either find someone who can find that opportunity for them. And that's an unknown too, right? So are agents now in the game? Right. Right? Can well, I, I, mean, can, I mean, can I come in and represent now a student athlete? Lee Steinberg signed Spencer Rattler. I know. Like, he's got a division of his sports agency that is deemed towards name, image, and likeness. And I guess he's got around the rules where now he's got the relationship building with Spencer Rattler, he's also got him under contract and is paying him. Right. I mean, a year from now when Spencer Rattler goes to make a decision on his sports agent, I'd be willing to bet that Lee Steinberg's got the advantage in the clubhouse. He's already made the decision on his right. sports agent. I mean, he's probably that contract in fine lettering probably <clears throat> says, you sign this, we've got you for the next five years. Of course it is. Of course it does. And so that's why these, the, you know, these athletes got to have somebody that's out there that's watching their back. But, yes, you're right, it, 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 the – you know, there could be a beef jerky company out there. I mean, like, there's a guy that plays uh, um, uh, professional golf, and his nickname is Beef, right? Uh-huh. Beef and, Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> right? Well, dude, I mean, Arby's, right? you know, scooped him up. I mean, like, so being able to find somebody who's cre- who's creative, who can come in and, and look at these kids and say, all right, look, man, I think you'd be a perfect fit for XYZ sort of company, and then you're going out there and shopping that kid. That say I keep saying kid. You're shopping that student athlete uh, to that company. But for right now, Man, it is uh, it, it is wide open in the Wild West, but the the market's going to figure itself out, and the universities have to figure this out too, because you know you're going to have opportunities with some universities that you're not going to have with others. But for instance, right now there are half the states in America where you can't make money because the states haven't passed a law, right? I mean, if if the Louisiana legislature hadn't been proactive, we'd have been stuck. And so if I'm, a, if I'm a high school recruit and I'm getting ready to sign with a college, am I going to go to the college where I can make money, or I'm, am I going to go to the one where I can't? Right. Uh, so there's a lot of catching up to do on both sides of this. Um, as we say, you, you have a background in public relations and in politics. He's the president of LR3 Consulting, Lionel Rainey, with us here on set. Uh, we had a lot of, of legislators come through here during session right uh whether it was uh Rever- whether it was tanner mcgee um we, we talked to uh, stefanski uh we talked to other um legislators that came through here talking <laughs> about uh, gambling uh talking about nil uh talking about uh, marijuana uh, what were some of the things that jumped off to you through the legislative session that was either uh, push through or, or things that were put on hold that, that that's going to make a difference for our state that's a big this was probably the, the biggest session uh, in regards to moving the state forward, I think in a long time, one we passed a we they passed a major infrastructure bill um, like they've never done before in decades. So if you hate traffic in Baton Rouge, if you hate traffic in New Orleans and on the North Shore, uh, just wait five Lafayette, minutes. Uh, you're right, <laughs> it's going to get better. So they're building a new bridge. Uh, over the Mississippi River wow. um, in Baton Rouge. And that's our guy out of Port Allen. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Um, and uh, Rick Ward. Rick Ward. And Rick Ward. Yes. And, and he came through here. He yeah, was, he was fantastic. And Tanner McGee passed that bill. I mean, now we're going to be able to have mobile sports gaming. Um, they just made um, flour uh, for uh, medical marijuana. So you used to just could do inhalation uh, and edibles. And now you're going to be able to have uh, – you're going to be able to have flour um, – uh, they passed a, uh, they did basically, they did a tax uh, reform package, uh, lowering and, and reducing the amount of taxes people pay. It was a big deal. One of the biggest bills, which is now news everywhere, was called the, and called the Women's Sports Protection Act. And I think we talked about that a few months ago. I told you I thought yes. it was going to be a big deal. Yes. What that bill does is it, um, it says that biological males cannot play female sports. 
you wouldn't think that would be controversial. And actually, it wasn't controversial because it passed with huge margins in the Senate and in the House. Uh, black, white, Republican, Democrat, it just flew out of the legislature. Easy decision. Um, got to the governor's desk, and the governor vetoed it. You have to ask him on his reasons why he would veto that, but it triggered an enormous uh, outrage. Do you again. have a feeling on why? Uh, yeah, my, I've, I have a guess. My guess is that that's, that's something that the uh, President Biden, uh, that administration, is uh, really big, really big on, and they're pushing really hard. And he wants a life after his governorship. He's got two years left, and I bet he would. I would think that he would probably want to join. That's my. Uh-huh. That's yeah. what I think. Sure. Um, or maybe he just is very he passionate. Just, very passionate about the the issue and thinks that you know the biological male should play female sports. I don't know. I mean, you, maybe you can get him on and ask him, but they are right now contemplating doing something that has never happened in the history of our state, and that's having a veto session. And what that means is after the session is over, they come back in to discuss overriding the governor's vetoes. Wow. And to do that, you need two-thirds. When's the last time that happened? So you, they've overridden two governors ever, only twice in the history of our state. Uh, um, ever, but they've never, and they did that when it was in session. They've never actually come back, wow. like left, and then said, "No, dude, we're coming back." And it looks, and we'll know in about eight days, but it is almost a hundred percent at this point that they are coming back in, and they're going to discuss overriding the governor's veto of multiple bills. There's a Second Amendment bill that I think that they'll that they'll talk about. And and been looking at the Women's uh, Sport Protection Sports Act, uh, and I think it's got a good chance of being overridden simply because the the vast majority of the population is just not with it. Yeah, most people don't think that guys should be playing girls' sports, and um, biological males who are who have transitioned, I guess, into females. Um, they just aren't with that. And now you're getting, you're seeing examples in the Olympics, so it's in the news a lot, yeah. right? There's a guy who won a, a beauty pageant and is now going to compete for Miss America out of Arizona, I believe. Uh, you've got a, a biological male weightlifter who has transitioned into a female who's going to be competing in the Olympics in weightlifting. Well, I always thought that the worst, <laughs> the, the, the best example or worst example was the, the UFC fighter that you always. Fallon see. Fox. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, no question. Um, and what's crazy is, I mean, you even look at Caitlyn Jenner, right? So what better example of a biological male who transitioned into a female who could talk about sports? He's an Olympic. She right. is an Olympic athlete. And Caitlyn came out and point blank said it's not even remotely close to being fair for a biological male to compete against females. They have faster twitch muscles. You've got larger lung capacity. You've got greater bone density. It doesn't matter if you, if you take – it's just – that's just, just science. science. Yeah. It's just science. Uh, and so it's a, it's a huge deal here. And, and, I, and my bet, it, it's going to be close if they can overturn it or not. Uh, you need two-thirds of both chambers. Uh, but it's a, it's a big deal, and it's, they're getting ready to clash at the Capitol and, and make a decision on it. It is crazy to think that there is a debate, or there's not a debate, on whether or not Shikari Richardson can run in the Olympics. Yeah, that's that, – and, you know, and, that, and we debate on whether or not – you should allow a, a biological male to run with the females, and you're going you're gonna to penalize the fastest female in the world for, for hitting a little flower that just is, is, is legalized now. In, yeah, and I get rules. I mean, sure. rules are rules, and she, she knew the rules, but it, I'm going to call BS a little bit because you uh, – sorry. That's – Nah, a little sorry. lightsaber action. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I thought that was Jack. Uh, somebody, somebody, was, somebody was super fired up. Uh, um, I Is mean, that a lightsaber in your pocket? Are you happy to see me? <laughs> both. Uh, you know, one, I mean, when the rules say that it's okay to take opioids for pain, but it's not okay to take, uh, to, to, to use marijuana for pain. Um, and then when you're allowing biological males to compete and, and just to be full of different hormones and hormone replacement and different therapies and then and you're not and you're not going to let her uh that i mean the rules seem a little shaky to me uh Mm -hmm. but uh, you know but listening to her speak you know it's it's refreshing to hear somebody not stand up and say 
I'm the victim, and this is horrible. And someone to say, look, those are the rules, and I broke them. And I, I mean, that it's really refreshing, and I hope a lot of young people see that and see somebody who's taking responsibility for their actions. Do I think it's BS? Yeah, I do. But uh, it, it's also nice to, to to see somebody stand up and own their mistake. I just said that – that's how you win the court of public opinion because she's done that. Everybody else has come to her aid instead of her having to fight the battle by herself. You see everybody 100%. else stand up for her. Yeah, 100%. It, very much so. Uh, if In that same vein, if you missed yesterday's interview with Tyrus Thomas, it is uh, very refreshing because it is along the lines of that same sentiment that, uh, that Lionel expresses there with Shikari on, on Tyrus talking about his time in the NBA uh, when, uh, when marijuana was tested for. Now it is, not, it is no longer... Uh, even tested in, in 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 the NBA. Pretty sure it's uh, not a. You know what? It sometimes it. I don't know if it's an enhancement or not. Sure. Right. Right. So you're talking if, about a performance enhancing drug. Yeah. Right, right, so right. if 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 I'm to use it when I play golf, let me tell you, it is not a performance. <laughs> no. <laughs> that tee shot on one shape, you boy. Really. I can't get off the tee. I can't pull the trigger. Right. But I've also got one of my best friends in the world who's an average golfer at best. Right. And there's no question that it is a performance-enhancing drug. <laughs> he turns from an average golfer who's putting, like, 30 feet off the green right. to somebody who's laying a wedge. Tiger Woods. Ti- no, nah, bro, Phil Mickelson. I mean, he's laying wedges w- wide open and hitting, like, 30-yard shots. shots that are spinning by the hole. I'm like, you've never done that in your life. He's twirling the club. So, so I guess um, for some people. It, it's, change your attitude, change your altitude. Right. Yeah. He's changing right. something for him, and I, you know, I can't swing the club. Um, I think the guy four fair ways over is looking at me um but yeah so uh so i like that um <laughs> tell me real quick before i get you out of here um we we like we said uh rick ward came through here yeah. tanner mcgee came through here john stefanski came through here uh we we were we we talked to some people up at la uh, uh, uh around the legislative session um it feels different up there in the sense of there's at least some new blood, new faces who understand the antiquated ways of Louisiana politics just is not going to get things, it's not going to get any changes made. Um, it feels like there is a nucleus of brain power within that that uh, that building that, that understands that right now. Yeah, man, there's an enormous amount of talent in that building of young talent. I mean, you're, you've, you've got some pretty bold leadership. You've got a bold Speaker of the House. Uh, you've got some young guys like John Stefanski and, and, and that are in there. And there there's so many, man. Bo, uh-huh. Bo, Bo Boye is another strong one. I mean, you've got a lot here uh, in, um, in Baton Rouge uh, um, as well. You, you just – too many to even name. It, it's um, – Scott McKnight's another good one. Uh-huh. Um, Baton Rouge guy. Yeah, Baton Rouge guy. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of smart guys. I mean, you got a guy named Daryl Desatel, right, who knows, who just took on Google and fa- and, and Apple this session and, and made them back down. And uh, So you've got a lot of young, conservative, but, but um, open-minded guys who want to get things done for this state and move this state forward. And I, start, I think you're starting to see – Louisiana start moving in the right in the the right direction. Things that benefit the taxpayers, things that benefit job employers. Uh, being able to get this state cleaned up and getting people back to work and and getting government out of the way and uh, and and getting us off the mat. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, absolutely, uh, man. We, like, we get like, a, you get a, you get a strong gush, a good strong young governor in there who's ready to go. Man, there's you know when you're at the bottom, which we are in almost every single category. There's nowhere to go but up. Right. I mean, what was it? It was. I believe it was McGee who came in we're here and was like, I mean, bro, we're 49th and everything. Why not? Can it get worse? Why not? I mean, just change it up. It was great. Right. Um, it's great to see you. Yeah, you too, brother. Uh, always. Um, you guys You guys thinking back to back? You guys repeating? You, I mean, you just, you I just mean, reloading? Like, you know, every year is, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you. you come in with an expectation <laughs> of, when you when you you know you pull for a, a dynasty uh, uh, um, uh, with the magnitude of the you leave your keys in your car again, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know you, you just it's a standard that you expect, man, of excellence. Keep everybody, it up, everybody man. hates a winner, and that's everybody cool. uh, yeah. everybody that comes through here uh, that has political ties or is uh, looking for PR help uh, always mentions Lionel Rainey. If you do not know about his organization, you got to check it out online at LR3 Consulting. 
Com. He is the president of that organization. He's a great friend of our show. He's been uh, he's been help for us since day one. I, I believe uh, the day we got our news that we were moving and transitioning into a an independent contractor status, I, I think that Lionel was the first person that I went and saw in his office and uh, gave me uh, very good direction, very clear information, and uh, I will always be grateful for uh, for him for that. But uh, if you if you talk to uh, politicians up there, a lot of those that he referenced, the uh, the gifted ones, the the, the, the new-minded, uh, very, very politically talented ones, uh, Lionel is, collect, uh, is connected to those guys in, in, in some sense. Uh, so we appreciate, uh, as always, uh, his information. Take care, man. Thanks, we'll talk brother. again soon. Later, yep. uh, Lionel Rainey in here with us on the, uh, on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, we will be back here Go catch uh, that snake for, uh, <laughs> for uh, another <laughs> hour here. Bar. Jay Johnson coming up here at 8.30 this morning. We'll talk to Coach Johnson about his new look. Uh, over at LSU Baseball. Remember, daily we're brought to you by AdvantaClean, uh, A-D-V-A-N-T-A, clean.com, AdvantaClean.com for Bradley Lynch. Water, fire, or mold damage, if you smell it, see it around the office or house, uh, they can take care of it for you uh, over at AdvantaClean. This is a firsthand uh, testimonial for our guys over at, uh, at uh, AdvantaClean. Uh, find them online. They're an industrial plex right here in Baton Rouge. Uh, and they are uh, great friends of our show. Bradley Lynch, water, fire, and mold. Let him help you today uh, over at AdvantaClean. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find A Bears Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com. Or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, daily brought to you by Go Chevrolet. Check them out in Laplace, Louisiana. They're also here in Baton Rouge if you want to find them. A brand new used car lot 
over there on Florida Boulevard in Sherwood Forest. Easy to find the crew at Go Express Auto Sales. They're online at Go Chevrolet, G E A U X Chevrolet.com. Remember, daily, we're brought to you by Hub International Insurance. Do you sometimes feel, if you're a uh, if you're a business owner, do you feel, uh, sometimes feel like your broker, your agent, uh, managing your health plan uh, just by pushing the easy button? Uh, let us fill in your most recent strategies for controlling costs regarding your health plan. Uh, if you're running out of uh, uh, the uh, if you're running out of runway regarding plan options for your group health plan. Uh, let them over at Hub International Insurance. Crushed it. Help you with <laughs> your insurance plans. You're standing I'll put up you, in front of the class. I'll put you in front of Scott Darty. Uh, is that tough? That. No, that's <laughs> the. The. That's, that's the, you one. moron. Cut it down now. Tahin? Uh, that's then. That's a tough you moron. One. Uh, Jay Johnson will be here at 8.30 this morning. Yeah, he'll uh, be very impressed. Yeah, that's right. Coach. <laughs> Uh, just reading your bio <laughs> here, Coach. <laughs> Coming Give me in. One second. Yeah, right. Uh, we're talking a lot about NIL uh, in uh, in hour number one, which that uh, scared me. That's like a doomsday waiting to happen. Like, which part? The taxes yeah, exactly. and the kids spending all their money. Yeah, that's man. why I'm always nervous about it. I'm like, but, whoa, because everyone's just gonna so try fast. and like they see like the Russell Westbrook drip, or gonna try and get a new car, and they realize that money you earn. Uncle Sam needs it. And well, if you don't have it, you're going to have to find no. a way to pay it. I mean, think about the specials. Think about the the, 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 the media that you've seen <laughs> uh, on professional athletes blowing their money. Yeah. I mean, they I made mean, a whole 30 for 30 money. about it. I mean, you, you think about putting this type of cash inside of a, a, you know, you line the pockets of a college kid with money like this. What, what do you expect is going to happen? I so, dated a guy who signed for professional baseball out of high school and blew it. Blew it all? I'd imagine, yeah. I mean, just... How much fun was that for about six months? How much stuff did you get? Yeah. I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that <laughs> situation. I'm, I'm accustomed I've to a certain life yeah, right. since high school. <laughs> school. The, Mercedes, the Mercedes 3 Series <laughs> just popped up one day. <laughs> with a big red bow. That's right. Um, I mean, Tyrus Thomas told us, that was off the air, that he told us yesterday how he cashed his first check. Right? I mean, like, he had absolutely no idea what to do. He was walking down the middle of the city in Baton Rouge with a check for a half a million dollars no car. in his back pocket, no car, Amazing. had no idea that he had only received half of the million dollar uh, price tag that he was promised because taxes were taken out of it. And, and, and no he, was, told him. he was expecting another check to come in the mail. He was like, well, when his agent said, you get the check? Yeah, I got the check, but I mean, they only sent me half. I guess they're going to send me two checks. He said, no, I mean, why, why do you say that? And we said, well, this was only for about uh, you know, 520000 He said, well, I mean, that's that's the total of the million-dollar frontage that we're, you're, we're giving you because of, of tag. What do you mean? And he had no idea. He had no idea. And he walked down to a local branch of a of a bank in Baton Rouge and, and asked if he could deposit it into into an account that he had to create that day. <laughs> I mean it's a crazy story. It is and he had been in college for two years. He said the only account he had was the bursar's office account. Yeah. It's just like I didn't even have a bank account really. Like whatever I had was in my pocket. But LSU is wow. offering classes, right, for this, aren't they? Uh, I have to imagine that, I, think, I have to imagine the they, they they are when there are stories like that that exist. Yeah. But you can I offer mean, as many classes as you want, but to get them to attend, you have no, to make know, sure that they're invested. They're yeah. the but I hope like, that, I don't know if they are or not, but you really, that's something that I think that they absolutely have to yes. get in front of. They have to. It'll be a disaster. I, I'm pretty sure they're they doing to. that. Because that would be, as well, good as the PR is right now, it would be the exact opposite. If you have three years down the road, it's like, oh, he's broke. And he gave him, you know, he was at LSU and he got all this money yeah. and never made it to the league. And now he's broke. And it's like, they, they never told me You're just going 100 miles per hour on the freeway with no brakes. Yes. Yeah. Well, the here's steering the, wheel. Here's the yeah. only thing that I believe that you can, you, you can rest your head at night thinking with security on this, that LSU is looking out for the student athletes, is that they want to align themselves with, um, with they the want athletes. It to work. So if they're putting their brand on the line and they are putting their brand in alignment with some of these messages and some of these partnerships – they are going to educate these these student athletes i'd imagine to the to the highest point in understanding what the what the fallout could be if something goes wrong because 
as good as the PR is, I agree with you. And LSU is kind of setting the standard here for the public relations or the support of NIL with student athletes. Um, if there is a story where somebody blows through cash and is, you know, gone from the starting cornerback to living on a corner under a bridge, well, this is going to be a bad, bad story that, that you're going to have to find some type of reasoning on how that happened, right? I mean, if you are going to be this aligned and this supportive of the students, well, then you better be taking the measures to make sure there could be that no they're disconnect. not homeless. Yeah, there could be no disconnect between the alignment, between the money that we're bringing in and helping them bring in and what happens afterwards. You're, right. you're, you're alumni now. You, you know, could, you have to take care of them. You mm-hmm. could become dead broke from the spending and all, and then the taxes get you. Or you can set yourself up if you do it right, talk to a financial advisor. If you get a $100,000 deal. Devin call, White. You could set yourself up for life. Devin White yeah. and Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry taught it to Devin White. And Devin White and then Trey White. It, it, there's There was three guys that came through here that uh-huh. were big-time pros, and it started with Jarvis Landry, went to Trey White, and then Trey White went left it to Devin White, where they never touched one of their scholarship checks. And I think every month these guys get right around 2100 I mean, they get, they get a nice little chunk. I mean, it's not... It ain't NIL it, money. It, it's not NIL money, and it's not Miami life-changing money, money, but you can, you can live... You can you can make it work as a college kid, um, but White, where Trey White, Jarvis Landry, Devin White, where they ate the meals every single day at on campus. They're perfectly good. That, that, that are fine. Staff. The nutrition stat, but this is even before the nutrition this center. This is at the five. This is Jarvis. Oh, I mean, and the other side section. Yeah, that was over there on uh, at the um, five. yeah at the five, and. They ate their meals every day, or they, they got their meals taken care of, however, however it was happening. They weren't paying for their meals. They weren't paying for anything out of their pocket. And the day that they left LSU, they had around $40,000 in the bank account, like in their, in, in their account, that yes. they just had saved, not touched, and going into their professional life had a cushion, small one, but had taken advantage of the system and saved their money. If you have a guy or a female student athlete that is signed to a contract with somebody that's paying them X amount a month, I mean, you're still getting your scholarship money on this, yeah. right? So, I mean, you, you, you sign a deal where it's paying you an extra 2500 to 3000 a month on top of what you're getting from your scholarship cash. I mean, if you really have a system put in place where you're saving, you should be able to leave college going into your professional life with some sort of cushion there. You know, I mean, with, with, with some type of, of outlook and some type of, of consulting or guidance, um, you know, I, I think that this could be very much a, 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 a very positive story for a lot of young adults going into professional life and being able to, to build some type of stash or some type of security fund or some type of just nest egg. Nest egg mm-hmm. that they have a, a exposure to. Um, have we talked anything about this affecting high school athletes? Is there, there's no, as we've said before, there's really no rules on this. So what's stopping somebody from getting a high school senior or high school junior that's a top-ranked player in the country? No, I, I don't. I think this is something that, that they are concerned with because I know of two stories right now, and there's a Texas football commitment that we talked about here on this show uh, I don't know, Jack, if you can go back and find his name, but he opted out of his senior year, right, like to, to take care of, of his body and make sure that he didn't put himself in any type of jeopardy in, 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 in collecting and being able to um, make Blue. money. What is or it? Jaden Blue. The running back? Yeah. Um, but, but that's when he gets to college campus? Yes. It's set up for that, so you can't pay high school kids, I wouldn't imagine. I don't know why, why, why not. What's the difference? I don't know why you couldn't. I mean, I don't know why you can't pinpoint a guy like Walker Howard and understand that he's going to oh. be a starting quarterback and like say, let I me just cheap. go get him. Yeah, I mean, let me yeah. just go – let me go pay that guy. Let me go uh, – let me go get Shaz Preston. Got a big personality. That guy's going to be a playmaker on Saturday. Let me go get in front of him uh, and start building that relationship right now. And if I got to grease him $500 to make that happen, I got no issue doing that. Well, you know I think what I mean? that's, that's some of the problem that people are going to have with that is that it affects recruiting, absolutely. Yeah. Like, if you have a Louisiana-owned business that starts greasing him as a junior and senior – like, where do you think they exactly. want to go? Wait, but, like, IMG, like, some kids will do that. They'll go to IMG for a year because you're a year removed from high school and mm-hmm. you go to NBA. 
So why can't... Oh, no, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. that. No, no, no. I'm like, so wouldn't it work? If IMG's, so wouldn't it work with high school kids? Or just there's no rules out? IMG's like a preparatory school, though, because you're one year removed from high school. Right. So it's, it's, like, it's, it's a different... It's deemed as like a fifth-year high school. It's uh-huh. like a preparatory school. Um, so... I don't know, man. I think this is that's the that's the feeling of the wild, wild west with this. Because that stuff. would be the first thing I would do if I was a, a booster or anybody that had money in business. I would go to the people that are definitely untapped. Like yeah. I would go to four and five star recruits because the way these recruiting services work, oh. it happens so early. You know who's good, especially in basketball. Like this is the easiest route to do it, mm-hmm. as opposed to competing with a bunch of like walk-ons and canes it's like why don't i just get them when they're 15 and then we've had a relationship it's what the shoe deal has been doing for 15 20 50 years yeah that's true so there's really no difference and now it's regulated almost one of the uh, top grossing nba players of all time i was trying to look up his name uh his name was junior bridgham he played that back in the 70s and he wasn't like he only averaged 13 points his whole career but the way he made his money was he went to law school and then used some of his money that he got in the nba and he bought wendy's and he started buying all these wendy's and chilies everywhere kind of like how these kids are getting partnerships and walk-ons like well, it's walk-ons well walk-ons has 22 locations louisiana texas even canes it's like this guy's worth 600 million dollars mm-hmm. because he bought all these sold them and then the money he got from selling these he bought other businesses like if you play this right and don't spend it all on, like, Gucci, you could make... I mean, you could ask for a percent of whatever business you're, you're in. You know, you could say, I don't want money, I want a percentage of whatever you're asking I, me to invest I in. Would do that way. Well, I think that that is going to... There is going to be some differentia- uh, some some outliers here where there are going to be some people who understand either if I own my business or I can get into ownership of business that is really going to catapult me a guy like that i mean that that example that you just gave somebody that uses whatever you get and reinvests or understands and take this opportunity to um to understand how you can be um how you can be a better business person man i mean i think this is this gives people great chance to learn that uh on the front line with with nil opportunity i mean you just they could ask for it in crypto. Yeah. I was just going to say that. I want to be a Coinbase athlete. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, you see that in the NFL. with, with it, They're asking for some of their contract in cryptocurrency or their bonuses, and there's been multiple offensive linemen that have done it. There's no reason to stop. You know, if they, if they have the capacity to, to do it, why not wouldn't you want your money in crypto? Like, well, there's sure. just It's going to open so many doors I don't think anybody's really thought about. Trevor Lawrence it signed a deal that's paying him in crypto. All uh, of it? Or yeah. Like I, I, maybe a portion of it. But some of the exchange is cryptocurrency. Um, and, you know, I think that, um, that, that you will start seeing stuff like that for sure. Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Nevadis. Remember, Nevadis is online at nevadis.com, and it is a custom software development service uh, that is helping us out over here at the Jordy Collada Show. Looking forward to seeing our, uh, our new web design, which uh, Randall Nachman and his crew have been working on for the past couple of weeks are also uh, in the mobile app development space. So if you need a mobile app and they can help you there, uh, get in touch with Nevadis.com. Check them out online uh, at Nevadis.com, N-O-V-A-T-E-U-S, N-O-V-A-T-E-U-S, Nevadis.com if you're looking for uh, for them online. They've got 18 years of experience in software development. Uh, They uh, provide solutions that make your business processes easier their commercial software solutions have uh, made a lot of lives easier uh, within the workspace, whether it's the, uh, uh, the secretaries, the receptionists, uh, anybody working in the front office, to everybody in the back office. Uh, they can help you out over at Nevadis.com. Check them out online at N-O-V-A-T-E-U-S, Nevadis.com, for, uh, for more information today. Game one of the finals last night, uh, and it goes down as uh, Phoenix uh, gets – game one as uh, they roll through and look like the uh, the better team here uh, as uh, Giannis had a moment last night in the finals that will uh, from an image standpoint will always be talked about uh, on that block the uh, the way that oh, it looked geez. like a LeBron bro it, I mean it was, it was they left in the same place in the court it was a scary parallel they even put a video up of them too like doing it at the same time and the, the the track down was even impressive to the point where it was almost in the same speed and realm but, yeah, they left from the same spot. It uh, doesn't look like it'll be remembered. 
the same way because yes. it was a game one as sure. opposed to a game seven. On the line, most closely. Yes, yes. And then um, after you kind of get the floor wiped with you, it might get lost in the annals of history. 118 <laughs> 105 last uh-huh. night. Phoenix wins game one over Milwaukee. Chris Paul, the story again for, uh, for Phoenix is the longtime vet at 32 and nine. In his finals debut, he had 16 in the third quarter. Didn't score in the first. Didn't uh, score in the first quarter. Is that crazy? So I want to feel the game out a little bit. I mean, amazing yeah. how he impacts the game at at the rate that he plays. I mean, he plays the game with very much just this ease of where it just comes. The last person I saw play like that that I can recall is Jason Kidd, where Jason Kidd just looked like he was almost gliding. He didn't even look like he was putting forth a lot of effort when he ran. Mm. When he dribbled, it doesn't look like it's very difficult for him. He can start and stop. He can cross, go right, go left. He's got the ball almost on a string. He's playing it with as the a way pace. he controls He's, it. Yes, and he controls everybody around him. Okay. I mean, you gotta you gotta realize that is nine other athletes around you that are world class. I mean, it, at least three of them are. You know, what I mean, three out of the nine that are that are surrounding you are world class athletes that can run, jump, catch at a just a rate that we have no idea. We can't fathom how athletic these guys are, and for him to be as old as he is, and and, and have as much experience, and never been on a final stage, and I know that doesn't mean much, but just the still the ability to play at that level and that pace. And really, just control the whole game. He just controls the entire game. And I, I have, I have pounded on Chris Paul in the past. I've always thought that having a dominant point guard should almost translate like having a a quarterback, right? And mm-hmm. the way that I look at football is, you don't have to tell me about your two deep everywhere. Just do you have a quarterback? And if you have a quarterback, in my opinion, you got a shot. You got a chance. And in basketball, it would be the same sense. If you have a point guard, if you have somebody that control the game and really makes everybody around them better, then you, you should have a chance. And the fact that CP3 is in his first finals appearance here in 2021 after such a long career in the league is crazy to think about. But when you watch him play, it just doesn't make a lot of sense why he hasn't been here because he is so demanding of the game. He demands so much of the game. I mean, the game gives Chris Paul so much within 48 minutes. I mean, the game respects Chris Paul almost more than Chris Paul respects the game when you watch them play. A lot of and and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not demeaning Chris Paul. I think that he is, he, he is a basketball savant, a lot like Jason Kidd. I mean, Jason Kidd was very natural with the ball in his hand, but the game just comes easy to him. I mean, he's he, he doesn't look like he's exerting a lot of effort. And for him to control the game, even on a night where Devin Booker has allowed 27. You know what I mean? I mean, he got eight with 21 and 18. I was just going to say. And Mikhail awesome. Bridges. I, I think that Bridges is, is almost like a, the sleeper of the, the league. Like, you don't talk about that guy enough. 3D. Just what he does, what he provides for Phoenix. I mean, he's almost got that Iguodala effect with him with the, the, the Warriors a couple years and back Johnson. where just – Golly, I mean, this guy does so much for you. I mean, even you, you've got superstars everywhere. And he's your fourth guy. Yeah, Iguodala is just, golly, I mean, he just, he, he does, he takes so much pressure off of everybody. Uh, Mikhail Bridges, to me, is that guy. But um, I just think I, I the feel way like Chris Paul's about to get it. I, I feel like he's gonna, about to get his championship. Well, and if you saw some of his post-game interviews, I think he thinks the same thing. Because he's, he's choking up in game one talking to Scott Van Pelt. Like, he realizes the gravity of the moment, the situation he's in. And I don't think there's any chance that if it's going to come down to anybody, he's going to put all of that on his shoulders. And that's how he's played basketball. Mm -hmm. Barring injury, that's how he's always played the game. He's put everything on him. He's a little bit like Drew Brees. Like, if I'm going to I'm going to control every aspect of this game, and if we fail, it's going to be on me because I called every play, I called every shot, and I made every decision. And that's what Chris Paul, you can tell that he understands the gravity of this moment, not just for Phoenix, but for his career, for his, like, the longevity. Shot, yeah, this is, his, this is his shot to get a title, and you can tell that he realizes right now, and there's probably something to him being 36 years old and being able to understand, like, 
you guys don't know how hard it is to get here. I've been trying my whole career. <laughs> Devin Booker gets here in year four. Will we look back on this run and, and talk about him going through L.A. without Anthony Davis, going through Denver without Jamal Murray, and going through L.A. without Kawhi Leonard? Do we care? Well, then I don't. <laughs> I don't. If I there mean, had been no Giannis, I, but, maybe. I, I wonder if history. I wonder if history does care. Is and, and even any champion though. You think? This year, this year, everyone got her. I mean, look at the Nuggets. The Nuggets probably would have won the finals, but Jamal Murray blows his knee out. I mean, you forget that they were down to the Lakers 2-1 before if, if AD doesn't get hurt, they probably don't get out the first round. You mean street clothes? Yeah, oh, street clothes. But, I mean, and they're going to say the same thing about the, the championship last year in the bubble. Like, you know, there's Maybe always outside. something. If your team doesn't win a title, everybody pokes holes in something or finds a way to get, you know, to make themselves feel validated about a loss. But, I mean, I, this is a, I think it's a more impressive run than – maybe last year just because of the fans, and it might be helping Phoenix more because that crowd is raucous. They were counting down Giannis again last yeah, night. Good nice Lord. Yeah, too. they got they, – they're in his head a little bit. But Were you impressive. Bucks or Suns? I couldn't remember. Suns. Yeah. So it's in uh, – Giannis made a couple, but uh, impressive to see him out there. I thought his knee was broken. Yeah, I, I came yeah it was. It was impressive to see him out there. Um, they got to get more from Drew Holiday. He didn't do anything, 10-9-9. Nine, nine. Well, also, like, my friends, if the Bucks go down, if they're, say, down 13, it's like – Who's going to be a bucket to get you back in the game with the Sun? I mean, it's only Chris Booker, Middleton. Booker can get hot. I'd be okay with that. But it's like, it's Middleton? Giannis isn't like that. Giannis can't get you 10 straight buckets. No, he can't. I mean, when he and he was hitting it last night. I mean, he was shooting it pretty good last Middleton's night early on. on. Um, and he was getting to the rim. You know what I mean? When when he can get to the rim early on, he usually can get what he wants because you got to respect but when the game his drive. Down and it's down, he's he not comfortable. Court. He's not comfortable. Who's gonna get you a bucket? He's not comfortable. I would only feel confident in Chris Middleton. Middleton. And, and like like Lloyd said, for for Milwaukee to have a chance, Drew Holiday's got to show up. He's got to become an All Star over the next six games. 10. Yeah, I mean, um, who's he guarding? Is he guarding Booker? They had him on Booker. They they did a lot of they did a lot of switching last night. Which, well, they would uh, run the screen and they put Lopez on him, and it's CP3's like, all right, let's. Yeah, right. It. I mean, that's a field day. That's a yo-yo. Well, I mean, that's what him on a string. And that's what they say about uh, the coach for the Bucks is that he doesn't make very good. He's not very good at making in-game adjustments. And then he, yeah, old Bud didn't make. Yeah. He seemed very confused about what they were doing. And Monty is the opposite of that, where they're scheming up everything. Monty's so a genius. Yeah, it seemed he like was. a bit of a, a coaching deficiency as well, just to get these guys where they need to be. He admits it. He says, "I kind of just get out of the way and let." Chris, Chris yeah. Yeah. So sometimes beautiful. He goes with Bro, it's you. beautiful. I mean, it's like, uh, th- have you heard the, the Stan Van Gundy interview with Levitard? On no. him giving some insight on, on, on the Pelicans, on just how far off him and David Griffin were? I mean, Griffin was more worried. He gave some great insight yesterday on his stop to Levitard uh, about his, his time in New Orleans and just how different of a page him and Griffin were on. This was Van and Gundy. At, this is Van Gundy, Stan Van Gundy, the 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 – the, the coach, the former New Orleans Pelicans coach, and him talking about Griffin was just worried about all the other stuff. Ancillary things. He was worried about people having good vibes and the the, the breathing and the, the food. And I, I just wanted to get them better. You know what I mean? I, I just really wanted to, 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 to put a competitor on the floor and win basketball games. And it, it feels like David Griffin – um, is, is losing a lot of grip here. Uh, if you go and listen to the Stan Van Gundy spot, uh, whether it is on Stupidities, on Stu Gatz's podcast, and then he follows it up with a spot on the Levitard show, um, you, you can hear in his voice he's, he's, he's respectful. He's not disrespectful. He's not trying to, to dump on anybody. Uh, but he's giving you his thoughts, and, and he's just not aligned. He wasn't aligned with, with the Pelicans' front office. And I didn't agree with the Van Gundy hire at the time, but I respect his basketball mind, and to hear what they're off page, what they're off base about when, when talking to uh, Pelicans brass, most notably David Griffin, uh, is very concerning. Very concerning if, if you were a Pelicans What's fan. What's the coach update? Is it there's nothing right now? I think it's a, a Phoenix? No, I th- yeah, I think, it's, I think it's probably the Suns uh, assistant yeah. that they're just waiting for them point. to finish up in the finals and make the hire. Um, okay, we will talk to Jay Johnson, LSU head baseball coach, next here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, where daily we are brought to you by RMB Builders. Remember, Rhett Bourgeois and his crew, rmb-builders.com. Get in touch with Rhett and his crew today on a custom-made home. If you need uh, anything commercially done, office, uh, he can help you out there. Online at rmb-builders.com. New LSU head baseball coach, Jay Johnson, next here on the, on, uh, on the Jordy Collada Show. I got an Instagram notification. Are you self-employed? 
then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show presented by Go Chevrolet live on this Wednesday from the UDL. Good stuff from Lionel Rainey in hour number one. Looking forward to our conversation here next on the Jordy Collada Show. It has been a ton of buzz since Jay Johnson has been introduced down here in South Louisiana as the next LSU head baseball coach. Uh, Many people have stopped through here telling stories and uh, talking about the interest. uh, And now we get a chance uh, to catch up with Coach Johnson here on the show. Good morning, Coach. Thank you for the time this morning. Sure, thanks for having me. Absolutely. H- have you had a, uh, a chance to uh, to get settled into Baton Rouge? And uh, what do you make of South Louisiana? 
Well, it's my home, and I hope it's my home for a very long time. So I love it. Uh, there's no better place to come to work every day than Oxbox Stadium. And very, very happy to be here and couldn't be more excited. The community has been amazing in terms of the welcome. So it's been it's been great, you know, celebrating the, the opportunity to be the coach at LSU and at the same time hitting the ground running and getting to work and trying to build our next championship team. Coach, we are uh, we're, we're close with the basketball program and Coach Wade. And, and right after you were introduced, he stopped by, I believe, the next day, and, and we asked his impressions of you. And I mean, he he was gushing. He was talking about how he loved the guy. He, he loved how you were uh, a, uh, a a master of detail of preparation, and talked about how you you couldn't live with about two minutes from the facility, and you didn't want to buy new clothes. All you wanted was the gear. You just wanted to be uh, around LSU baseball and around the job. Uh, have you found that easy to do uh, since since being in Baton Rouge and being on the job for, for now over a week? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people want to win. A lot of people don't know what it takes to win, and that's a 100% commitment. That's what I ask from our players, I ask from our fans and supporters and administration. And the only way to truly get that is to do it yourself and to dive into it and go for it. And that's what I've done since uh, I've been here, and that's what I'll do every day that I'm the coach of the LSU Tigers. And we're off to a good start relative to some recruiting uh, success, working on assembling a great staff that our players will really, really benefit from and go to work on the process of building a team that everybody can be proud of because that just doesn't happen overnight. That happens, you know, when you put a lot of good days together and I think we've been here about this is the 10th day and we've put nine really good days together and and ready for number 10 and that's where my focus is today. Uh, Coach, before we get to your staff and before we get to some of your roster, um, one thing that is very familiar, at least for me, uh, is your stature? Uh, I am a five foot eight Italian who thinks of myself as six foot four, uh, <laughs> and, and thought I was growing up, and thought I was going to be a football player, much like you. When did you realize the dream was over that you were not going to be able to play big time football and chase that Heisman Trophy? <laughs> well, my senior year, I was averaging nine point eight yards per carry. Wow! Uh, wow! <laughs> scoring, scoring a touchdown like every six or seven touches of the ball, something like that, and. You know, those recruiting letters and scholarship offers were still not coming in. So I remember sitting in my room halfway through that season going like, you know what, I better make sure that I'm getting myself prepared on the baseball diamond because this football thing is probably not going to happen <laughs> outside of the junior college level. And I don't remember seeing uh, ABC Sports or College Game Day showing up at junior college football game. So I turned my attention to baseball at that point in time. Nine yards a carry. Well, co- I mean, Coach, they uh, they saw that fumble you, that you pulled back in the day. That's why they didn't want you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Coach's son, um, what is that? How does that prepare you for for whether it be a, a athlete growing up or, or or going into your professional career and knowing that you wanted to be a coach as well? Yeah, it was instrumental. It's probably the most significant thing in my life. You know, every second of my life was built around competitive athletics and seeing a very good model of what it takes to be successful and consistency and hard work and building good relationships and being a good X's and O's coach. My dad was all of those things. So that's all I wanted to be. I really just wanted to be like him and it it led itself down this path and felt like I got an early start and was very prepared um, when I started coaching because I had such a good example from the time I was a, a kid. And I owe a lot to him and and feel very grateful for that. Uh, You've mentioned roster management a couple of times since you've been introduced, and I heard some of the stops that you were on with Cody and Emily and some of the radio stops you made. Um, Jacob Berry is in in the transfer portal as soon as you announce that you've taken the LSU job. Then he, over the weekend, says that he's coming to LSU. uh, And and obviously people are elated uh, to to, to welcome him into Baton Rouge. His dad played down the road in Lafayette. Uh, for the Cajuns, so I think he's got an understanding of the area and the geography. Um, w- what does LSU get in, in Jacob Berry? In-, in seeing him play, obviously the numbers pop, but you've coached him. W- w- what is LSU getting? Well, you're getting a guy that is incredibly talented. I mean, he has great hitting skills, tremendous power, great plate discipline, and from both sides of the plate. He is the best switch hitter I've ever coached. Wow. You don't ever you don't ever worry about are they bringing in a lefty or are they going to stay with the righty because he's equal from both sides of the plate. 
it can really, really impact the game and has a very advanced and mature approach and obviously tremendous hit and power tool. Uh, he's a very good defensive third baseman. He has really improved uh, throughout the season or improved throughout last season. He's doing a great job out of Team USA, both offensively and defensively, you know, playing with Dylan Cruz and putting those guys, you know, lined up next to Trey Morgan and hopefully Gavin Dugas comes back for another year. And Kate Doty and Jordan Thompson. I, I think we have the makings of a really, really good lineup, one of the best in college baseball. And then getting to work with those guys and helping them improve that's really exciting to think about. How much or if any input does does Maneri or get on on the current roster? How much stock do you put in to, to evaluating these current guys with with the relationship that you've obviously formed with Coach Maneri, which seemed like it was uh, it was very beneficial at the opening press conference? Yeah, Coach has been great. I can't think of anybody handling a situation or a transition any better than Coach has, and he really wants to see LSU be successful. He poured his life into this thing for 15 years, was tremendously successful all the way up until the end, and has a great uh, love for the program, great love for the kids in the program. And so I did take his guidance, and I really try to pay attention to people that are very knowledgeable at, at specific subjects or, or the best at what they do. So he's been very helpful. I've taken that under advisement. Uh, ultimately, all the, all the decisions now are mine, and I accept and res- um, accept that responsibility and am excited about that responsibility. But both him and, and Coach Burtman have been amazing in, in my transition here. Uh, you guys are in the news over the last 24 hours. It seems as if you have if pegged your next pitching coach in in Jason Kelly out of Arizona State. I, I know that there is not an official release from the school yet, so I'm sorry if I put you on the spot here, but um, Jason Kelly and, and what you, you found in him in, in the interview, and uh, I guess is, the, is this your next guy as, as the, the, the man to lead your pitching staff? Yes, he is, and Jason is a terrific pitching coach. And what makes him so good is he has a complete skill set. And that, that, that position is so important. It's like the offensive line coach in football. You know, if that unit's not right, then it's really hard to get things going with consistency. So he's excellent in the game. You know, and I know what we're coming into in the SEC and the quality of programs. And, you know, we need to get LSU back up into that tier one of, of SEC programs. And the only way we're going to do that is to pitch at a high level. And so I'm very comfortable with, with standing in the dugout next to Jason and, and talking about decisions relative to who we bring in, how we match up, him doing a good job relative of calling pitches, the preparation, the, in, the preparation for the game he's very good at. And then the day-to-day with pitchers, you know, using every resource that we have here to help those guys improve, whether that's velocity, pitchability, all of those types of things are really, uh, really strengths of his. And probably the one that separates him more than anything else is his ability to build relationships. And that's essential in terms of developing trust to be able to get the development out of the current pitchers. And it's essential in recruiting, you know, to get guys that want to come pitch at LSU. And for, for reasons of, of substance, you know, not just all the other resources that we have, that this guy can help you become a major league pitcher, which all the guys we're going to recruit are going to want to do. Loved hearing your philosophy on assistant coaches and, and most notably bringing me back when, when you were telling stories to when you were one and, and you were the, 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 the head of hitting, uh, director of hitting, coach of hitting when you were an assistant and you wanted that part of the, the, the team to be the best a, a, as an assistant. Um, what are you looking for in, in, in filling out the rest of your staff? I know that you're the offensive guy. You're the one – uh, that, that is teaching the offense and teaching the offensive mindset. Um, what, what are you looking for in your staff to fill out the, 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 the rest of it? I think in this last position, uh, in terms of the paid position, it's going to be one of balance relative to recruiting, you know, being connected in this part of the country, you know, what I would call, you know, Big 12 country east, because we want to be able to recruit the entire United States, the kids in Louisiana, Texas, and in the southeast, we will have the West covered, obviously. So that's the recruiting part of it is important, but it's not just recruiting. That guy has to be a really good evaluator mm-hmm. because saying no to players at LSU is just as important as saying yes. So you have the right team. So that's the first phase. And then secondly, I really like the talent we have on this team. So they have to be a good 
developer in whatever that role is. You know, it's, it's probably someone that will coach their base. It's probably someone that will work with infielders relative to the skill sets that I'm looking for. So our current players need to benefit from, from this hire as well. You know, with our volunteer assistant, you know, the goal is to have somebody complement the rest of the staff and, and provide value. And then all the support staff, we're still kind of working through and evaluating. But really what I want is, is guys that can positively impact our players. Because if we're positively impacting our players and all of them are developing, the winning kind of starts to take care of itself. The um, the, 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 basket, uh, the, the the baseball fraternity within uh, Baton Rouge is very proud, very loud uh, as far as the LSU standpoint goes. There's still a lot of those guys around that are – uh, contributing to the community, whether it be through coaching Little League or running um, training uh, sessions in town. How much have you heard from those guys? How much uh, have you, um, I-, I guess, uh, been introduced to the history of LSU baseball that really sits right here under the nose of Alec Box Stadium within South Louisiana? I'm paying attention and, and trying to make sure I'm learning and, and respecting everybody. The, the, the reach of this program within the state of Louisiana is amazing throughout the entire country is amazing. When you look at the people that care about it, when you look at the alums that have moved on to do great things in major league baseball and then, you know, come back and are positively influencing all the future baseball players in Louisiana. And so it's a very connected state. It's a, it's a state, it's a community that really loves its program and, I want to respect and, and honor all of those people and, and how we do this job. And again, it starts with building relationships. And as soon as we can get the roster kind of settled, get through the major league draft in a couple of weeks, I really, really look forward to diving into that and, and making everybody uh, connected to this program in a way that they want to be, in a way that's going to positively affect LSU baseball. You've had success versus the SEC. You beat Ole Miss this year in a Super, and you beat Mississippi State in a Super to get to Omaha. Uh, what is your overall thought of the conference that, that you come into, uh, obviously with the two teams playing for the national championship, but from, from your point of view, the last uh, 21 seasons in, in and around college baseball, what are the thoughts around the Southeastern Conference? I just view it as the ultimate challenge. You know, I want to be the best at what I do, and to do that, you got to play and compete against the best. And there's some really good programs right now throughout the country, but it all starts in the SEC. I kind of view the SEC as the heartbeat of college baseball. You know, sending the most teams to Omaha, sending the most teams to Super Regional, sending the most teams to the NCAA tournament. So I want to be right in the thick of that. I want to make it more difficult on the other coaches in the SEC by getting LSU functioning at its highest possible level in terms of recruiting and developing and having a good program mindset and and that's our goal. So I, I couldn't be more excited about that. I know how difficult it is to win college baseball games and win college baseball games in the SEC. But that's why I wake up every day and uh, and go to work and want to make our, our program or state really proud of, of being one of those top tier teams in this league. And we got some work to do to do that. And, and we're starting right in and we're going for it. Uh, you obviously ha- are, are a goal driven uh, individual. It seems like uh, it is no accident that you are here. Um, in, in the way that you respect the game uh, of college baseball, uh, how cool is it now that you have Skip Bertman's name in your in, in your address book and your contact book? Yeah, let's just call that task number one when I was uh, when I was announced. Yeah. Uh, the first thing I did was call Coach Bertman, and I didn't get a hold of him the first day. And then the next day, I called him and had a great conversation. And then we flew out here later that evening and then the next day was had a chance to have dinner with him and sit and talk with him and he's going to be it's going to be at least a once a week conversation with coach Bertman I mean I view him as the John Wooden of college baseball and uh, to have a resource like that getting started here uh, is amazing and uh, I, I can't tell you how cool it's been how enjoyable it's been to spend time with him. Uh, Coach, we have a uh, we we've got a a welcome gift basket from A Bear Specialty Meats that we are going to drop off to your office. Uh, the people of South Louisiana are fired up to have you here in Baton Rouge, leading LSU. Uh, I know you are very busy. We uh, we thank you for your time this morning and look forward to meeting you. 
Same here, guys. Look forward to talking again. Thank you. You got it. There is uh, Coach Jay Johnson checking in from LSU Baseball this morning as the uh, the Tigers have tabbed their next man, and Jay Johnson is on the ground running uh, after uh, after uh, the news that that has popped over the last 24 hours and 72 hours for his program, whether it be Jacob Berry, where he gave you uh, some thoughts on, on who Barry is and how he can help at LSU, best switch hitter he's ever coached. Doesn't matter who's on the mound, righty, lefty. If if if, if you're watching uh, some of the highlights from Team USA, he popped one over the, the the scoreboard from the left-handed side. Cruz hit one off the scoreboard from the right-handed from side. The right-handed side. <laughs> um, I mean, dude, just to think about what that lineup could be with Morgan and Cruz and Barry and who knows who else. Dugas. Yeah, back. I mean, Dugas has got to come back. I mean, man. he's having meetings. Like I you mean, said, if somebody's on, driving man. around the facility at 11 p.m., he's like, come on in. I'm still yeah. here. I wonder who that was. <laughs> South Louisiana <laughs> native, bro. Come Where on. are you going to go? You got a chance at a natty? For a year. Come on back, man. Hit and me I, back. I, I expect him to be And the, the relationship between Barry and Cruz already starting to develop has been very interesting. Yeah. Like, they're, they well, seem to like be like they know each other already. It looked like they they have probably played together in off season uh, before because they were trading messages and 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 liking all of their social media stuff almost to the point where um, you know like they had met like they, they were flirting yeah they were flirting in yes. public yes they were um, so uh, that was good that was good stuff from uh, from Jay Johnson appreciate him stopping by remember Edward Jones uh, brings you our our chats here uh, on the uh, on the Jordy Colada show let them help you out Katie and I went and met. With, uh, with Daniel last week to celebrate some of the success that we've had since rolling over the 401k to Edward Jones and, and Daniel Newman. Uh, as he promised on the first meeting, it would be very easy, very simple, and uh, since then it has been nothing but that. Um, and uh, to see some of, the, uh, to see some of the, uh, the money that has been made uh, by Edward Jones and Daniel Newman since, since uh, so some of the investments that he made uh, just about six months ago, uh, has been cool to see and been cool to keep up with. Uh, let him uh, have a success story for you uh, today by getting in touch with him. Daniel.Newman at EdwardJones.com. If you work inside of the plant industry over at Dow, over at BASF, any of those spots, uh, let him help you out. He's got expertise in that area on, uh, on the financial makeup. He can uh, help you out with 401K, Social Security, investments, whatever you need to talk about. Get in touch with Daniel Newman. Daniel.Newman, our financial advisor over here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, Daniel dot Newman at Edward Jones dot com, and he'll come to you. He confirmed that. That's he right. Don't have to go to Central. That's right. No he will. Uh, he will come to you. <laughs> uh, Walker Howard shining at the Elite Eleven as uh, Howard was uh, uh, one of the uh, the top quarterbacks around the country. That was top uh, three. Yes. Did he well, get a PS Five there? Uh, he, uh, you know, he brought them there. Yeah, I was about to say, that was, that was probably a good week That's for business. That was probably a good week for business. Uh, he was out in California last week. That was the annual showcase that brings together the nation's top quarterback prospects for uh, a couple of days of competition. Uh, workouts uh, include uh, pro day events, classroom sessions, film breakdowns. They attend a, uh, a training camp. They test one-on-ones. Uh, with the quarterback, and they wrapped up with their seven-on-seven tournament. Uh, well, they they have about twenty quarterbacks uh, invited out there uh, for this event annual. Uh, this this event a- uh, every season. Uh, they trim that down to eleven, uh, and they name that the Elite Eleven. And then from there, they they rank the the eleven competitors. And uh, Walker Howard was in the top three. Uh, he is one of the top three quarterbacks, according to the Elite 11 Showcase, which is about as good a stock that you can buy in quarterback recruiting evaluation. Uh, label uh, Walker Howard as a top three quarterback in the country. Uh, Cade Klubnik uh, won the MVP. He's a Southern Cal commitment uh, out of the state of Texas. And then, uh, or excuse me, he's a Clemson quarterback out of the state of of Texas, and then Southern Cal quarterback Devin Brown was ranked uh, a little bit ahead of him. So ahead of Mullet, he beat out the Mullet kid. Uh, Quinn Ewers. <laughs> Mullet kid. Yeah, Ewers Mullet is uh, Ewers is the Ohio State commit. Mullet man. Mullet uh, man. That, that that you were referring He'll grow to. He'll into it. He'll get there. Uh, but Walker Howard, top three quarterback in the country. Well, Our they, guy. Man. Well, what they said was most impressive, or at least what I found most impressive. He didn't really shine during the uh, like individual stuff or anything like that. It's when the team came together and he. 
he threw two touchdowns and I think at least one before the end of the half to kind of cement his place as the so when the competition broke out that's when Walker Howard shot the most yeah which is what I took from it like the individual stuff that's fine like I know Walker Howard can throw a football and I know he runs a four seven three like I'm good with all that but if you could be able to get out there and be able to shine with with guys you've never played with before and be able to mesh pretty quickly yeah. i found that pretty impressive especially somebody i want to come in and play as a freshman yeah he was uh I, I believe after the first three days of competition he was like number eight, eight on the board uh and then they put him out there for the last seven on seven event and they they had a quarterback coach saying that if they would have had a draft after that event there's possible that he'd have gone one the dog came out uh that that he just it, it started he just he started to shine Somebody probably whispered to him, hey, bro, you're eight on this list. Yeah. Like, I'm what? You're Excuse me? Get out the way, dude. Yeah, I'm That's next. That's why I took it personally. Yeah. <laughs> you're behind that nerd Connor Wiegman that's going to A&M, bro. I mean, <laughs> say what? He's about to join a cult in a year. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, all right, good stuff today. Thanks to Jay Johnson for stopping by. I thought Coach Johnson was great, man. Did they find the snake good. yet? Yeah, can we please talk um, about the snake in the mall? Well, I Kara. mean, you know, this is Baton Rouge, it's man. It's a pack sun. But that's bizarre. Wait, I read an article where it said she was very sweet. I saw that sweet. too. You saw that? Yeah, and they're like, oh, it's like, the hell out of here. I would chop her head off with a <laughs> shovel no. if I saw her. Yes, Bro, I would. Twelve feet yes, long. Would. You're not. It's not going to do anything to you. Oh, whatever, dude. I, care I know he's not going to. She's not going to do anything to her without a head. Yeah. <laughs> Kara, uh, the yellow Burmese her head off. Yeah, it's a yellow Burmese python that's twelve feet long. I read an article about an eight yes. foot python that's a yellow Burmese that killed its owner. Like these things and just yeah. wraps yourself it around. Yeah, of course it happens. And you're trying to cuddle up with it. To, okay, I'm not trying to cuddle up. Where I'm do not they find it? Of snake. They have it. They have it, dude. It's loose it's in the mall. It's loose in the mall. It's in the toilet. <laughs> That's the best thing. Okay, wait. In Austria, there was a guy, I think it was yesterday. Did you read that article? Yeah, I did Who, too. A neighbor's snake, same snake, same kind of snake, got out. He goes to use the bathroom. It's no. in the Stop. toilet. No. And he said he felt, it, he, no. said he felt a, a sting no. on his genitals. No way. <laughs> and oh looked God. in the toilet, no. and there's the snake. Nightmare? Biting his balls? Yes. 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 I mean, top one nightmare, right? Would yeah. you, top one. Would you it's a neighbor that has 12 top one. other snakes. Uh, oh, is it Dwight they, Howard? They rescued the snake, cleaned it, they said, cleaned it off, and then cleaned it. Cleaned it? Yeah, I skinned mean, it. Cleaned it. Cleaned it. Oh, I burned it. How do you clean? After it bit him, he was like, oh, let me give it a little clean. Well, no, like the people that came and rescued the snake oh, cleaned it. Oh, he pooped it. on it. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Because if he's sitting down to use the toilet... Your disgusting scrotum. <laughs> yeah. And he got a little bite, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't bite if somebody shit on me. I wouldn't bite. Yeah. What do you mean? But Clean they're not poisonous. Well, Clean me. Yeah, I hear you, bro. Snake. I hear you. Is the snake found in that inner wall? No, it it's not found yet. That's such a bad story, bro. They said they think it got bro. to the ceiling, They build maybe. an aquarium. The aquarium. The aquarium. It's like Hollister. The aquarium is not built up to standard to hold the snakes. No, it's not. The first day that they're open. And the snake escapes and it's inside the mall. It's like building a library downtown and it's fallen. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just rebuild this thing for 55 years. Right? My God. Build them another library. So that one every three blocks. There. So the snake is on it. So the snake is still out there. Yeah, floor, snake is still there. I think it's in the floor. ceilings, maybe. 12 feet long. In the ceiling? What? Yeah, that's what they think it probably went. Burn the mall. I mean, what Why? do you do if he's just Why up burn there? Them all, though? What's the snake? What's Kara ever done? To are you me? are you a snake person? I do like snakes. I don't. Yeah, I'm not scared of them. House. They, I do have a lot of. Oh snakes yeah, you're right. I noticed that house. too. Snakes and goats. A lot of snake paraphernalia. Yeah, that is that's but, creepy when you say it like that. Like paperweights. I know, it does sound like they, that. They were paperweights. They were like on the lamps. It was, yeah, yeah, I oh, wow. and all this stuff. A decorative like, figure. Yes. I do like a snake. Not a cross in sight. I red flag. Have, I would have this snake. Like, red flag. Red flag flying. <laughs> wow. Jesus snakes. Christ. Snakes is decorative. Yes. What a red flag. It is. I mean, what? it looks great. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't cool know. It means me. something. <laughs> exactly. It means something. I don't know what it means. What's your birthday? But I'm swinging a red flag. I'm waving a red flag. <laughs> Taking notes on She's got around. snake paperweights. I'm out of here, bro. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah, no. She's got goat skulls on the wall. I mean, it's just oh, it's no, decorative bro. in there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Got some stuff going on in there. It looks cool, but I guess go. if you like wanted to really look into it, like first <laughs> time in the really house, like, on a date, but like, yeah, something. Over, really overthinking. Explain it. the snakes. Explain the snakes over dinner. <laughs> Sit down. It's not that. <laughs> Watch your seat. There might be one on the loose. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bidet. One. I would have Kara if she needed a new home. Are you serious? I totally would. Katie, but no your dog. One, no one she would allow go. that. She needs to go. Might. Jeez. I'm out on snakes. I'm out on snakes. Y'all are. Man. Would totally you rather? Snakes. We saw a snake on the beach, and um, one of the uh, 
one of the kids that we were with, one of the families that we were with, had a kid that brought a rabbit mm. and had it like pinned <laughs> down. <laughs> right? Yes. And I mean, we were like, bro, better go get that rabbit. I mean, they're coming to eat. Did you smell it? Wait, I guess so. Did you rabbit to the beach? Well, it was their condo. Okay. Um, and yeah. Just traveled I mean, with the rabbit. They traveled you put it with on the a rabbit. leash? Uh, no, they put like the cage over, you know, in the sand and I mean, left it a nice little. Really? Area uh, to get to, eaten to by a snake. <laughs> yeah, right. To be hunted. <laughs> Dinner is to served. That's like bringing a snake to the beach. Uh, yes. Yeah, you don't do that either. I Would know. you rather snake in the toilet? Oh, no, I'm out. Or whatever else you give me, I'm in. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's like, like fall off a, a tube and yes. there's a small gator. I'm out. I, I will walk on water. I will I will oh be God. back on the boat in in an instant. If you put me on a toilet where a snake is climbing out of the toilet, uh, how do you really sit down and do that securely like ever, ever again? again? I know. You ever wouldn't. again. You just check. Well, uh, the thing is, yeah, but bro, even if you I mean, check, they're, they're swaddled down there. Like, I guess so. They think it came in the pipes. Yeah, so because I guess that's so like a comf- it's comforting for a snake. Out of it's like a little uh, chiropractor massage. <laughs> like if you go through the tubes, you're getting oh bent all gosh. such ways. You're like, this is nice. Very then you evil. get balls and shit in your face, <laughs> and you say, I'm never mind. I'm, I'm hunt- attacking. I'm, out I'm of hunting here. Karen today. Karen's on the loose. We should, we should go to the mall. We should go to the mall. We should go, go, we should go hunt. hunt. <laughs> we should go hunt. Rubber <laughs> boots. <laughs> what, yeah, what are you bringing? A I nature hat shovel. and a shovel. <laughs> That's all I need. And a pellet yeah, gun. Sucks. I mean, a pellet gun and a shovel. You know it's going to drop out of some changing room somewhere, oh, like yeah, Forever 21. Some yeah, girl's yeah. going to be there freaking <laughs> yeah. out. You know what they're going to do? They're going to say that they caught it, and they never did. And it's just going to yeah. be there. It's yeah. going to yeah. fall through. It's going to yes. be 80 It's going to be eighty feet long yes. and fall out the ceiling. Yes. Has anybody oh, out there, good. I see that we, 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 we're we still having a, uh, we still got a pretty good audience that we're talking to here. <laughs> why why did, not? Did anybody Shockingly. see the story of the UFO that possibly landed in Clinton, Louisiana a couple of weeks back and now has been scrubbed from the internet? I am trying no, to find the story. you mentioned it, but then I never I did. Heard. There was somebody, and there, first off, there was a report of a loud Bang! Just a, 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 a loud noise that sounded like a plane crashing in Clinton, Louisiana. Okay. So whoever, whoever, That's loud. whoever, it, very loud. That's loud. Whoever makes this claim picks up the phone and calls the cops. Well, the cops come out there and begin to investigate and cannot find anything. There is no sign. There is no... Um, there's no details of no any, trace. any, there's no trace of anything falling out of the sky. Did the person who called see anything fall out of the sky or they just heard the noise? They did not, but somebody did uh. around them. So whether there is huge conspiracy growing in Clinton, Louisiana, or there is a federal government cleanup of trying to hide that a UFO landed in Clinton, Louisiana it's about three go. weeks ago. Somebody please confirm this story because I have been trying to find this on the internet. And I, the internet has been scrubbed <laughs> That's of this I story. I just picture Jordy like furiously <laughs> searching for Clinton, Louisiana. Plus what UFO. happened to the UFO, bro, in East Feliciana? That's weird. Where is it? And uh, I mean, I just want to make sure that I'm not taking crazy pills. Uh, well, I mean, you are. For I your am. Tooth. But this is before. This is pre-crazy pill. <laughs> and where is this story? And if you're in Clinton and you're around it and you got any idea of what I'm talking about. Get in touch with the Jordy Collada Show. Jordy Please, at Jordy Collada Show. Jason, I remember the story. I, Jason, can you find a link anywhere? We uh, if know, if you can, please send it my way because I remember reading this, thinking this is this is incredible. Yeah, this is amazing. We got to talk about this on the show, and then going back to it, like it either happened on a Thursday or a Friday, and going back to it on Monday and being like. Where is this story? That's weird. Do you think it's either one it got scrubbed by the by the, the federal rallies, yes. the government, or the that they were just like this story's complete bullshit? We're like we should take this off of the UFOs internet. have been huge lately. I well, know, but I'm saying in Clinton, Louisiana, and we have two we have two sources that we I don't trust. Very if you much. want what I what, what I am pulling for, it would be for the latter for B that it just didn't it just didn't happen. This is a BS story. There are no UFOs. And uh, Patrick Kimry, I'd say about a month ago, three weeks ago, within that window, within but, that window. So if we have if summertime in like 18 years, if there's a freak athlete come out of Clinton, Louisiana, it's an alien baby. it could be an alien baby. Dude looks like an alien. Dude Look, looks like an alien. There's a huge Boy Scout secret, camp there, a the thousand acres. We need to get to that Boy Scout camp. Um, the Boy Scout camp's a thousand acres. That's what he said in Clinton. We do need to get Nakamoto on this story. 
the yeah. Boy Scout camp makes me nervous. Yeah. Yeah. That. I'm, I'm not yes. doing any investigation. <laughs> you want to go to the Boy Scout camp? A lot camp of later. skeletons. Forget in that, that closet. Yeah, forget yeah. that. Yeah. Forget yeah. that, dude. You want to earn your last badge? Keep Put your scarf. Get out there. Um, all right. So if you got any, if you got anything on that UFO, let me know, man. I hope that uh, it is not a crazy story that I am making up, but I don't think I am. I don't think I am. They're I, out there. I remember reading it, and and like Katie said, UFO has been yeah. in the uh, in the headline news, mm-hmm. and we are not denying that they exist anymore from the from the federal government. And if they do exist, and one of the first story that pops after we claim that they do exist is that one crash landed in Clinton, Louisiana. I need some background. Yes. Though. I need some background. So you'd rather meet an alien than a snake in the toilet? So it's an All day. Box. No way. All Are you day kidding me? long. One hundred. You'd rather come face to face with an alien. I'd rather party with an alien than, 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 than dump on a snake <laughs> a all day long. Camp in Clinton, Louisiana. All day. <laughs> all day. I'm not as scared of the, the aliens as, as I might. I mean, like, if one was to crash wait, in my backyard, wait. don't let me sound like I'm big, bold, and tough. Oh, I'm not going to fight it. I'm, not, I'm definitely not trying to fight. I'm trying to hang, bro. Yeah, yeah that's I'm trying to see a different world. Yeah. I'm trying to see what exists out there. Yeah. I mean, we've done cool stuff. I've done cool stuff in my life. What are y'all doing? You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) what's the cool stuff that y'all got going on? Y'all got so much cool stuff going on, you just fly right by Earth. Yeah, y'all fly against the wind. Y'all fly in these things that look like teacups, bro. I mean, like, take me for a spin. Yeah, man, let's do this. No crash landings in Clinton, though, right? I mean, keep this thing steady. That might have been, you know, that Louisiana liquor law is a little lax. A little drive through daiquiri. Right. (laughs) Mr. W is probably another Dylan Cruz home run. Maybe. Maybe, maybe so, man. No, Hopefully it was. Meth lab explosion. Hopefully oh, it wasn't a meth lab. That's no fun. Would you let them touch your forehead? That's yes. how you get like, the I'm knowledge. In, man. If it I'm gonna hang, your mind. If I'm going to hang, I, I, want the, I want the alien experience. I, I, I want the alien experience. A probe? If I'm, if I'm going, uh, Then you're back to the snake talk. Wait, someone did say, what if it's the alien from Predator? I'm out. Yeah, that's... You no, I'm out. Vision. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. But you have to run that risk. Yeah, but I mean, we're we're a good judge of the room. You know what I mean? We're a good judge of character. That seems like the alien. I mean, as soon as we come face to face with the ET, we'll see what's up, man. I mean, you know what I mean? Do I need to run? (laughs) Do I need to get the hell out of here? They're listening, probably right now. There's a good chance, right? Well, you know what? One of us might have an encounter. I would love to later. Hang out. Yeah, just chill, man. I mean, just chill. Come on inside the UDO. Yeah, we got a couch. (laughs) Yeah, man. I mean, we are seven days away, seven days from right now, from outrunning the suits, from hiding from the suits for six months. For for the six months that we were told that you are not allowed to do anything, we have been hiding out successfully now for just under six months. Seven days until six months. It does feel good. What are we going to do? It does feel good. Got to celebrate that. Kick Pretty the deep. doors off this place. Yeah. Absolutely, Open man. air stadium. Go get us a studio out yeah. front. <laughs> yeah. Uh, out on Main yeah. Street. Invite all the aliens. Yes. Um, I But let the record state. I want the alien experience. Okay. I want nothing to do with your snakes in the toilet. I may right. never go back to the Mall of Louisiana ever again, which is not a threat. I was no. not one of your primary customers. Yeah, was When's the last time you've gone? Really yeah. uh, about Christmas. That. Christmas. Probably Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. I'm probably a twice a year Mall of Louisiana guy, but if, if Karen stays on the loose, I'm never going back. If I'm never you going back. Her to Karen. What's no, your name? Kara. Kara. Okay. Yeah, Karen. 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 Yeah, right. Get back in your cage, Karen. Karen. <laughs> For God's sakes. Here's the Super Bowl trophy maker. That woman. Lorraine. Um, Lorraine. Lorraine. Snake Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're out there, aliens, we want the experience. Yeah, Doors are I don't open. Know. I mean, speak for yourself. Well, you go, you go hang with the snakes. <laughs> yeah, you, you pick your team, yeah, bro. We'll roll with we'll, the aliens. <laughs> you roll up with your snakes. Yeah. We'll roll up with our. Watch aliens. that house right there, bro. A lot of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of snakes, man. And goats. Uh, all right, have a good day. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Thanks to Jay Johnson and Lionel Rainey. Uh, go see Go Chevrolet.